Hey y'all, and welcome to Geospatial Experiences. I'm your host, Melissa Mayo, and I'm an Esri engineer on the product team. This podcast focuses on the application of geographic information. Let's go on a journey together with some of my amazing coworkers, along with Esri customers, partners, and distributors who are doing really cool work in the field of GIS. Today's episode is going to be inspiring, and I'm thrilled to introduce you to some new acquaintances I met via the first season of the podcast. For this conversation, I'm joined by a really interesting group of people who are doing fantastic work in their community. Mike Cousins, Frank Romo, and Chad Segris from the GIS Pathways Program at Frederick Douglass Academy in Detroit, Michigan are with me today, as well as some students from the program. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Hello. Thanks for having us. (laughs) Absolutely. This team is doing some incredible work in the GIS and education space. I'm excited to learn more about their efforts and the journey that each of them took to get here. I'm super looking forward to hearing from the student representatives who have joined us to find out more about their experience being immersed in the program. I love how this team is so committed to and passionate about investing in the next generation of GISers. So let's jump in. We have a ton of ground to cover today, and I'm super excited to get to get into it with you. So, so let's go around and introduce each each of you first. So, Michael, let's start with you, and we'll just work our way the the students. So, you guys, tell me who you are and who you're with, and kind of your um, place with the program, and then we'll come back and have some deeper discussions. Yeah. So I'm Mike Cousins, uh, the GIS director and practice leader for OHM Advisors. Um, headquartered here in Southeast Michigan, and I've been with the program since 2019 with Frank, and uh, I'm on the advisory board with Frank, and we help lead this program forward. Thanks for having us. Frank, do you want to? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. My name is Frank Romo. I'm CEO of Romo GIS. Uh, Romo GIS is a company that focuses on using technology and GIS to help empower youth and empower communities across the country. Uh, I've been part of the advisory board and the advisor, been serving as an advisory board president for a few years now, and I am very proud to say that uh, two of multiple of the gentlemen on the call have also worked for Romo GIS as interns. Very proud of all of these young men, and thank you for having us. Chad Segrist, I'm the pathway lead at Frederick Douglass Academy um, at Northern High School, uh, Detroit Public Schools Community District. Um, I have uh, been involved since its inception um, and to be able to work with uh, most importantly, the students, but my guys here uh, um, are beautiful and it's uh, with their help that this is able to be as uh, impactful and, and, um, and as, uh, um, as good as it is. I think it's an awesome program. So, Hey, Keith, tell us a little bit about you. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Keith Anthony Morales. I am a senior at Frederick Douglass High School for Young Men, uh, the only distinguished NAF academy in the state of Michigan. Um, I have been in the GIS pathway since my freshman year of high school, and it's been a wonderful experience. I've watched it. I watched us grow um, as a pathway, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of the team. That's amazing. Zylon? Hello, everyone. My name is Zylon Holmes. I'm currently a senior at Fairjax Academy for Young Men. I've been a part of the pathway since ninth grade, and I have been here for every step of the process leading up to now. You guys have so much experience to share with the underclassmen, too. So we have we have a couple of them on as well. Uh, David, do you want to introduce yourself? All right. Hello. My name is David Lockhart. I'm a student ambassador at Frederick Douglass. Been here since my I've been here since ninth grade. Been a part of the pathway since ninth grade. Um, wanted to say I'm glad to be a part of this pathway and glad to be a part of this meeting we have today. Thank you. Thanks, David. That was great. Devin, how about you? you can you hear me? My name is Devin Smith. I am um, a student at Frederick Douglass. And Devin, you're a junior, correct? Huh? Are you a junior? Oh, yes. Okay, awesome. Amazing. Thanks so much for coming on. We're excited to have you. 
Okay, so that we've gone through introductions with everybody. So I'm going to kick back over to you, Mike, if you don't mind, and start out with telling me about your journey. That's how we start the podcast off. So tell me about your journey and how you came to be where you are and what was the you know inspiration behind getting this program started? Yeah, yes, ma'am. So I started my journey off in a different field like most people going to college. Um, I was actually a dual enrollment student as well um, over in Macomb County. And uh, I was in a criminal justice dual enrollment program. And so I got to see the benefits of you know acquiring college credits through high school, which really helped me out at uh, Michigan State University, which is where I went. Um, after a couple of years, I got kind of burned out by the CJ program and switched over to GIS because saw the you know crime analysis, crime mapping aspect of it. And so I wanted to kind of get a specialization and jumped over to geography and GIS and graduated back in 2007 and then moved down to Florida for like eight years, worked at a couple different places, one at a big global engineering firm, and then I uh, worked for the U.S. Army on a DOD contract, which is pretty cool. Um, then I left there, came to OHM Advisors a little over 10 years ago, and I've been here since and developed my GIS program here at OHM. And then it's part of you know, our mission statement of giving back and advancing our communities. Um, heard about this program through GTTC, and, uh, which is Michigan Geospatial Technologies and Talent Consortium. And back in 2019, a few of us got together and I met Frank Romo and you know, we hit it off and we both had a passion for wanting to help advance our community and, and give back to help with the next generation of you know, geospatial professionals while also trying to help diversify our field. And I think it's really important to have different you know, backgrounds and opinions and takes on different things. And that's why I really love this program is we're, we're bringing on these next generation of leaders, Keith, Zylon, Anthony, everybody here are awesome people, and they're going to go on to do great things, whether it's in the geospatial field or not, it, it doesn't matter. Um, these young men are awesome, and where they started to where they where they are now is phenomenal to see, and that's what helps excite me about this program, and um, I want to continue seeing this program grow, and I think we have a bright future ahead. I think so, too. You guys are doing such amazing work. So, um, Frank, can you tell me about your journey? And then I want you and Michael to tell us kind of the overview of the program and give us, you know, some info on that as well. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Frank Romo, CEO of Romo GIS. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, like I said, we do work all across the country working on using technology for social impact and change. For me, my journey in GIS started when I started working uh, when I was at Columbia University and I started working in emergency response and using uh, GIS after Hurricane Sandy. And I'd done that a few times where we started to integrate GIS into real world problems. And I think uh, that's really one of the things that inspired me to start my company and utilize it as a vehicle to help communities, specifically communities of color, underserved communities, to ensure that we had tools and access and resources to these very viable uh, career paths, to these very viable tools that are going to help improve our communities. And so one of the things that um, I did while working at the in the state of Michigan was work for emergency management there. And I helped uh, the city of Detroit build up their 911 system and some other work uh, around fire and police emergency response. It was there when I first learned about uh, Frederick Douglass Academy and their interest to develop this program. And so from there on, I, I connected with Chad and that was uh, just, you know, one step at a time, figuring it out. What does it mean to active participants? And Chad Seegers has always shined and have really taken a lead to not only become leaders at Frederick Douglass, but also become leaders in the Detroit community, in their families and uh, across the country. So really excited to have them here with us. That was great, Frank. And I know we've had someone else join. So is, let's see, we have De Anthony. Did you, have, have you joined us now? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Welcome. Introduce yourself to us uh, really quickly. That way we, we get a feel for your voice. Hello, my name is DeAnthony Neal. I am a student ambassador and student leader at Frederick Douglass Academy. And I'm a part of the NAV program. I'm in year three 
of being in the pathway. And I'm a, um, I am a GIS specialist at Romo GIS as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to come back in a little bit and do a segment with all, all of the students. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So just wanted to get everyone introduced uh, initially while we're while we're working through things. So, um, OK, Frank, I, I appreciate you going through everything. I, I love your journey. I think it's amazing. And so, Chad, I, we need to know about your journey and then we need to know the, you know, how we got this program started and tell everybody between you and Chet and Mike, Mike and Frank, we need to know about the program and the, the all the details. So, um, my journey to this point is uh, obviously a little different. Not coming with uh, a business background, it uh, almost is by happen chance that uh, or happenstance that I I, I was here, um, and we were as a school trying to decide what pathway would be offered for our students. And we had some other uh, local um, uh, foundations and, and businesses and, and partners that were involved in that uh, first uh, kind of start of our pathway journey. Um, but we had some change at the leadership level and, um, uh, and that kind of, at that time it shifted. And we had, at Frederick Does Academy, we've, we've, we've had. All right, Chad, let's talk about your journey a little bit. And then I want to move in with you, Mike and Frank, and talk about kind of the foundations for the program and what the program really is and what it does for these students. So go ahead and start with your journey. Okay. Uh, as it relates to um, a GIS, uh, I was, before coming to Frederick Douglass Academy, I was at, um, uh, DIT at Cody High School. Uh, it was smaller schools within a school, um, and you developed uh, pathways. Um, and that's the first time that I uh, became acquainted with uh, Dr. Shi. Uh, he is our dual enrollment administrator uh, for, at Eastern, um, and uh, kind of dabbled in it a little bit. Uh, in terms of, of doing some mapping, but that was uh, I, that was back in like 06. Um, and then uh, when I got to Frederick Douglass Academy, um, they were beginning a pathway in introductory electrician uh, work. Um, I didn't see, I wanted our students to be challenged more. Um, and I didn't uh, thoroughly, after oh, sitting in on many of the meetings, uh, didn't really embrace it. And then I saw that there was a summer program that was offered and had been for some time at Frederick Douglass in GIS work. And it is through that kind of relationship where uh, we had these ESRI's licenses, uh, students were going through in the summer when we had a leadership change, uh, Dr. White, uh, when he had gotten here, um, came to me and asked me if, if um, that he would like me to operate as the take the lead on on uh, uh, a new direction that we were going and we were going to offer GIS as our pathway. Um, and because of our connection with Eastern, um, that's kind of how that whole thing kind of got started. And um, and it just uh, then it just kind of just took off from there. Um, uh, it it really was. Uh, it really helped ignite my uh, uh, passion for teaching again, because I was really struggling with, uh, am I going to have to do another year of, uh, you know, which science am I doing this year? Uh, what do I have to do? And I just knew that our students needed, they needed something more. And, you know, I, I started the ambassadorship program over at Cody, and it was very impactful. And I had a very strong partnership advisory council. I knew the importance of developing relationships with uh, community partners and putting other adults that cared about students uh, in front of them. And uh, because when given the, the chance to do that and the students to see there's just a bunch of people that care about their success, um, I knew that that's something that wherever I went, it was something that I was going to want to push for. Uh, student voice has always been important and at the forefront of the work that I do. Uh, and I knew it had to be uh, a part of what we do. And uh, then when he asked me to kind of 
take the reins on this and uh, he's given me the autonomy, Dr. White that is, has given me the autonomy to, to kind of find the way. And, um, and I, I'm certainly, um, I know to surround myself with those that know more than me. So if there's one skill, if there's one thing I can say about myself, it's, it's understanding that. So that's uh, why the two gentlemen that are on here and, and others that are on our advisory board and that impact our students' journey every day are so important and vital to what we do. Um, and I'm getting to know more every day too. So uh, my, my kind of GIS journey has just begun. Uh, Esri and, uh, uh, is a big part of that. And uh, um, just students that didn't know what GIS was and had no interest in knowing what it was, <laughs> to be where we're at now um, is just amazing. I agree. Your program and all of you in particular, you know, all of you just really have impressed me as far as the, the students have been impressive already to me. They're just, um, I don't know, they're just so well-spoken and you can tell that they're enjoying their time in the program. So it's going to be fun to talk to them. And it just seems like you guys have put such a good, a good curriculum together and, and they're learning so much. So Mike, let's, let's get into the program and sure. tell us what it does for the students and and I will of, say that they're, they're so much better to listen to, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for them either. <laughs> All right, Melissa. So our uh, NAF Distinguished Academy uh, is a dual enrollment program where our students are exposed to the field of GIS. Uh, the students go through three college courses through Eastern Michigan University, where they can earn up to nine college credits uh, while in the program. The students are exposed to all types of GIS, um, but from the Esri platform, you know, they learn about ArcGIS Online, Story Maps, Drone to Map, and, and other applications. Uh, they get hands-on drone and UAV training with an opportunity to take their FAA Part 107 certification exam. Uh, they also have opportunities to take Esri certifications as well. Uh, they receive life and career coaching. Uh, we go through mock interviews. Most of all of them are on LinkedIn now and connecting to, to people and building their network out um, with the goals of our students getting internships, opportunities, or full-time positions after high school if they choose to not go to college. Or if they go to college and they come back, how can we help them land a position? How can we give them a better hand of cards and, and succeed in life? Like We are here to help them and and introduce new technologies, new ways of thinking, everything, help them think spatially. Um, that's what we do. Um, and there's, there's a lot of opportunity here. And again, this is only going to keep moving forward. Absolutely. The, it, the opportunities really are endless and you have such a good foundation here. I think that, you know, there's a lot of room for it to just continue to grow. Um, you know, Frank, how did you get involved with the program? It seems like, you know, there's, uh, a lot of plug-in and tie-ins between OHM and Romo GIS. How did you, you know, how do you stay plugged in? And kind of what, what is your, um, what's your, what's your role with the program? And how do you connect with these students? So I believe, like Chad was saying, uh, you know, I was working at the city of Detroit, and um, a few gentlemen were talking about, hey, we want to do this mentorship program. I got an email. And I wasn't on the email thread and I was like, it just kind of stuck my nose and I'm like, what's going on? Because um, I've done a few mentorship programs, specifically in the geospatial industry um, for like one of our uh, professional, professional, what do you call it? Kind of networks with ERISA. So I've developed a, a network of ge geospatial professionals before. So I kind of stuck my nose in, asked what was going on. Then I, that's kind of how I met Chad. And at the time it was a different principal as Chad was saying, we had some turnover. And through that time, during that transition, we really saw an opportunity to, as Chad mentioned, pivot into the geospatial world because there was just, especially being in Detroit with so much uh, revitalization going on, so many new companies, so much new tech coming into the city, uh, we just felt like it was, was the right move to ensure that our students had opportunities and access to these resources that were being poured into Detroit. So pivoting into the geospatial kind of drone world was kind of a no-brainer and Chad and, and Mike and the team really helped us transition into that first year. And as Chad said, uh, that first summer camp was really one of our biggest deals where we had 
I remember that first summer camp, you know, David was one of our first ones who was a real fr uh, early freshman that year. And um, we've just seen those gentlemen from that one summer camp matriculate throughout the course of the year, then become leaders during the summer camp. So for me, um, as an advisory board president, I, you know, set up the meetings, do all the kind of back end work along with Mike, um, helping us kind of manage all of the moving pieces from the educational piece to the professional development. For me, one of the things that's really important are the mock interviews, professional and personal development pieces, because um, it's great to learn the technology, but we know that our, our young men need to learn how to carry themselves, need to learn how to represent themselves. And they are also very adamant about that too, because they recognize, and we always reinforce this, always tell our young men, you know, you're like, just because you're a leader in our program, I know that that means you're likely a leader elsewhere. And we see that with a lot of our young men, they're leaders in their community, they're leaders in their homes. And so it's more about building the whole person and ensuring that we have that comprehensive model. And I think Chad has really helped reinforce that. So we meet the students where they are. We talk with them, we meet with them in person, you know, from learning how to do handshakes to learning how to, you know, represent themselves and Multiple of, our, multiple of our students have presented in multiple states and in front of large audiences. And so to see that matriculation and us helping facilitate and foster that in whichever way, uh, it's been really, really phenomenal. And I, I really like to give kudos to our whole advisory board team because each of us plays a unique role, right? Each of us has our strengths and we bring that to the students and we offer our technical expertise, our personal expertise, our professional expertise. But at the end of the day, uh, Chad will always say, you know, a lot of this is held together with the love and the passion that we have for the students. And um, Chad, I think, is one who leads by example in doing that. Um, you, when you see the students' admiration for, for him and for each other, it's clear that it's not about GIS. It's much bigger than that. And I think the community and the family environment that we've been able to foster here um, is a big thanks to our principal and to the, the program, but it's also a big uh, representation of all the people who are here and their long-term commitment to ensure that we support these young men and support the city of Detroit in its growth and rebound. I, I'm inspired by the passion that you guys have. You know, Chad's in the schools and he's teaching and he's around these students all the time. And you and we hope our teachers in our schools are passionate about their students. You know, that's one that th those are the students, those are the teachers that really make a lasting impression. But for you guys, you're not in the school. You know, you're you're external. You're with external companies, but you are just as passionate. It's, it feels like to me. And you're passionate about the individuals, the students themselves. You know, you want the program to be successful, but you want those students to be set up well for the future. You want them to be established and be able to have those those life skills that they're going to take with them no matter what field they go into, whether it's GIS, medicine, you know, whatever it is, they're going to take these skills that you, you're teaching them. And I just, I think that's amazing that you guys are, are so passionate about it. And so I, I just want to say thanks to both of y'all and, and of course, Chad, but say thank you for on behalf of the students, because you guys are pouring into them. Thank you. And, and I hope that when they realize that what you just mentioned, that they pass it forward and help when wh when and where they can with their local community or other students of college or high school or wherever you know it's it's training that next leader and we want them to be leaders and no matter where they go so uh, all the students that were introduced earlier you know they're all student ambassadors they are our leaders they're training the next generation of leaders and um, um, we're hoping that they take that on every step that they go out throughout their career and their life so, Mike, we talk, we were listening to to Frank talk about kind of how he plugs in with the students and connects. Do you, you know, plug in with them and connect similarly? Do you have other areas where you kind of focus on? Because you guys all, you know, yeah, you have your different strengths, as Frank was mentioning. So, I'm just wondering what it's like for you when you're, you know, connecting and and really, you know, having impacts with with students individually. Sure. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, again, I love these guys and I want to see them succeed. And I'm, I try to do everything that I can to be there for them. You know, I'm a, I'm a seasoned veteran in the GI space here in the Midwest region. Um, I, I'm there to help make introductions to keep people in our space. Again, help mentor them, find opportunities for them to market themselves and the program, like Frank said, by speaking at regional and national events. We had them at Michigan State for GIS Day. We had them at Eurasa Pro down in Columbus last year. 
um, getting them in at the state GIS meetings that we have, our user group meetings, trying to get them into some call, wherever we can to get them to go and speak and, and talk and get that speaking experience, but also help show off our program and, and the good things that they are doing. Um, I, I, I try to use my local networks, my business partners that I'm working with, uh, to try to find opportunity to help come in and either sponsor our program or talk to our program about what they do or how they can help our program. You know, even an opportunity like this, this podcast, this is a great opportunity to help get their voice heard. Um, we're doing big things here in Detroit and, you know, I want the world to know about it. You know, wherever we can go and show it off, I'm going to do my damnest to make sure we're there and, and have a seat at that table. So I'm, I'm more on the marketing, the external focus piece. Frank is really internal and um, we're both there at all the different events that we do, the mock interviews, the summer camp, the Earth Day event that we just had. Um, you know, we all have our different pieces, like you mentioned, and uh, but we're all key pieces, key cogs of the wheel to keep this train moving forward. <laughs> Absolutely. You're even about to hire one of the, the graduates from the program, correct? Yep, yep. Uh, we just hired a student. His name's Ashton. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to be joining our field services department, uh, working with Ray Lillibridge, who is our uh, drone teacher for our program. Uh, we introduced drones a year ago now, two years now. And um, Ray's worked very closely with Ashton throughout the program and really wanted to bring him onto our team. And Ashton's a phenomenal drone pilot and really a great young man. I remember meeting him very early on at those summer camps he was the shyest dude you'll ever meet and seeing him blossom and being one of the leaders in our program is phenomenal and you know we're lucky to have him on our OH ohm team and really looking forward to continuing you know training him and, and helping him as he moves on through his professional career and you know that's just one we've hired another intern in the past we're looking to continue developing these pipelines not just with ohm but with our other business partners so that when, if they choose to not go to college, they want a full-time job, how can we get them a position? Um, if not with us, what other companies in the space? How can I utilize my network of, of contacts that I know, or Frank's or Carmen's or whoever's involved with the program? How can we get find them positions? Or again, if they go off to college and come back or go to the military, come back, whatever it might be, we have an opportunity for them um, in, in one facet or another. I think that's amazing. It has to be exciting for for you and all of the advisors, everybody involved with, you know, kind of coordinating and and kicking this program off and keeping it going. It has to be exciting to have these students graduating through matric matriculating out and then being hired. I mean, even if it is by OHM, they have to kind of go go through and come away with the right skill sets for you to be able to to want to hire them. And so other people are going to want to hire them as well. And so that has to be exciting and you, you guys should feel proud, you know? A hundred percent. And, you know, from when we started this program to now, you know, our dropout rate at the school has plummeted. Our post-secondary enrollment has skyrocketed. You know, we're giving opportunities and we're changing our school as a whole but through this program, which to me is really inspiring. And I get really excited about, and, you know, we're only going to keep, going up, we're gonna be one of the top schools in Detroit. People are gonna to wanna to come to our program. And you know, this is a great opportunity to show off GIS and what we do as geospatial professionals. And um, just we need, need continued support. We need other mentors, other professionals. Funding is a huge thing that we keep fighting for. Um, you know, there's a tremendous opportunity here as, as we know, our field is constantly changing GIS geospatial thinking is in every single industry. And that's what we try to teach these kids is, again, no matter what you do or where you go, this could be valuable for you. It's applicable everywhere, really, you know. So, and you're you're kicking off my next kind of area I wanted to move into uh, beautifully, Mike. So thank you. So I'm going to shift to Chad for a moment and then it may come back to, to Mike and Frank on this as well. But I really want to know, Chad, you know, how is this program, the GIS Pathways program, How's it benefiting the school academically? Mike touched on that a little bit, but if you want to, you know, explore that in a little bit more depth, feel free. And, you know, I was curious about kind of how it's kind of boosted your overall enrollment. And, you know, I was going to ask about kind of those, 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 those post-graduation numbers as well. So just let us know how the program's impacting the school for, for you. Um, 
when the program started, the graduation rate was uh, just over, I think it was 54%. Um, and it has steadily increased over the time that we've uh, implemented uh, our pathway. And uh, we're standing at about 95% as of last year. Um, and uh, a lot has to do with with our approach and 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 uh, what we've established in terms of this collective that uh, the two uh, that Mike and Frank have spoken to so well, um, we found a way to kind of um, impress upon students that uh, the pathway is uh, kind of the springboard and it, it, for your approach into whatever it is that you do. So we've seen our uh, um, improved proficiency indices uh, in math and, and, and in English uh, go up since uh, we started um, our, our growth index in terms of, of, of um, averages in those have increased each and every year that the program has been um, put in place. Uh, student success and quality indices are off the charts. Um, it's gone up approximately 35% in the last three years. Um, and, you know, and those kind of measures, um, you have to have them. <laughs> you know, that, that data is very important. And um, it's something that I think everyone's proud of. I know that what we do in the pathway um, affects students' approach in other classes. It's because that we're, there's an expectation of them and they believe that they can do it. A lot of this is because they've come to understand that when much is given, <laughs> you know, much is expected. And it takes some a little bit more time, but when they find out just how much they're loved and uh, how much people want them to be successful, um, I think it has a lot to do with um, the word that gets out there and, and uh, Mike and Frank uh, giving them opportunities to speak um, people reaching out to us and wanting us, our students, to talk about what's going on. Uh, but I think it's just that excitement around it is because of the team that we have. And uh, ultimately, it, it spills over into our students. And, and you can't help but sit back sometimes and uh, just be proud of, of what they've done, what they're doing um, in, in a lot of in anything that we do. And, you know, graduation rates, like I said, are up considerably. We kind of had a hiccup because we changed buildings. We knew that we would, we expected to lose quite a few students this past year because we're in a new building this year. But the majority of our students came along with us. And uh, so we didn't really take the hit that I thought we would. I think it stunted a, an increase in growth, but um, I expect our numbers to continue to climb as people become more aware and familiar with our program, and that word continues to get out. Um, and, uh, you know, it, um, in terms of numbers, um, it, 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 due to accountability and transparency, all you have to do is go to the state numbers and it'll tell you what, what's happened over the course of the last four years. So, so what about the students as far as how, how have they responded to these classes the geospatial themes, learning the technology as a whole. I mean, it seems like it's been super positive with them. It just, you know, we're, we're in a field that you don't oftentimes hear about at this age. Um, we Most of us kind of find our way to it once we're in college or, you know, once we're out in the world. And so I'm just curious how, you know, high schoolers, when they're getting exposed to uh, these topics and these, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent in schools for, for students, you know, at the high school level and even younger to, to be exposed to GIS. So how did they, you know, um, how did they respond to, to the topics? Well, the first, the, the first year that we offered it, it was our dual enrollment courses were, um, we had a freshman class that did fundamentals of GIS and it was just an introductory course. They set up their AGO account. They worked on some initial uh, uh, fundamental story maps um, just to kind of get them acclimated to, to what GIS was. We offered, it was at the time, all three courses were offered during the year. So a student would take 101, 201, and 301 in order for that full year. Um, I didn't like that. 
So I asked, I don't want to, I, well, I said, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I, I don't hesitate to do that. Um, and it, uh, and it was received. Okay. And, and we, we, so we started, we started offering, we started with our ninth grade and then our ninth graders elect whether or not they want to stay in the pathway that first year that it was offered. And keep in mind, not one student knew what GIS was at the beginning and two months in, not one of them was going to stay in the pathway. When you start putting people in front of them and they're doing more things and then they start having some success and they see that they can do this thing and they feel proud of what they're doing and they're supported by so many um, uh, people that care about them. Uh, we had 97% of our, I think one student chose not to be in the program at the end of year one. And what we've done is we've now taken our program of study. They will take a semester course for their 10th and then another in 11th. And then again, in 12th will be their internship and certification. So by splitting that up, it allows uh, them a little time to do some of those other things that are important, working on some of those Microsoft skills, uh, Google presentations, all of those other skills that are oh so important. And we make sure that they get to that. And we've incorporated that into our other uh, semester for them so that they're able to take that GIS course, kind of spread it out, really embrace it. Our seniors this year are really the first graduates of that four core, that four year process. So uh, um, I'm really anxious to see them, uh, see what they could do in terms of their testing, but they just finished up some of their capstone projects. Many of them did very well with that, developing a story map, collecting their own data, doing their own analysis. And uh, um, I look forward to sharing that with not only our board, um, but also to have uh, them sent, some of them sent on to the state competition. Um, so our kids think they can now. So, um, and you'll see, you'll hear from them soon and hear the excitement in their voices about what it's meant to them to be a part of this. So um, there's the proof in the pudding. <laughs> Absolutely, I think it's great. They just are, they're, they're gaining such important skills that I'm thinking back to even, you know, when I left college, I mean, it's all, you guys are almost prepping them as if they're in a college program. You know, you have, they have this capstone and they're doing these presentations and things. I mean, these are things that I did, you know, as an undergrad in college. And so they're gonna have such a, you know, a leg up or, you know, however, whatever phrase we want to use about it when, if, if they choose to go to college, you know, they're just going to be so much better prepared than a lot of other students are when they, if they, if they make that journey, it's, you know, it's impressive. It's, you know, they're, they, they, they have a, a great foundation, you know, looking at it from the outside in, they, they have such a good foundation by moving through this program. Very intentional about what we do. We find out where they're at. And like, if, if we see that someone's a little more artistic, whenever we get together and there's an opportunity for that to happen, that's what they're doing. Um, you know, we had a staging area and there's some students that worked in that staging area on Earth Day the whole day. And that, that was their job. And they made sure that, uh, you know, that when a broken shovel came back six times, <laughs> that it was set aside. And uh, by the way, I have to stop back at my local Lowe's and uh, see what I can do about that. But <laughs> um, we try to be very intentional in our approach to each of our students. And I think that's another way in which they understand that, you know, they're not just, just throwing something at me and expecting me to be like this GIS guy. You know, it's, it's um, they're finding what I'm passionate about and making me aware that I can, it applies to what I'm passionate about. You know, I can use it in anything that I do. And uh, um, I think it's, it's by being, by the, taking the approach that we have, doing things with fidelity, making sure our NAP platform, the structure it provides, um, it's making sure that we utilize the, the platforms that we have and, and we do them intentionally. And uh, that's really gone a long way in making sure our students are successful. And they seem to be making their way back after their quality grade A lunch uh, moment. And, uh, but yeah. Yeah, and, and also, sorry to interrupt, from uh, the college standpoint, you know, getting all set up and whatnot is, you know, we are also bringing in local universities, both two-year schools, four-year schools, community colleges, universities, some big-time programs in the region 
to come and talk to our students. All the, the geography department and academic advisors are coming in and these students, for example, go to Michigan State. Rand Shadbolt, the academic advisor, wants to talk to them, wants to help them, help guide their journey through college so that it's, it's successful and, and that so that they can succeed. They want to be a part of the students' uh, lives as well, which is huge. So trying to find those opportunities to bring in representatives from different options from a university or, or school standpoint is, is also huge. We have college days or events where they all come in and talk to the students about their different programs or different offerings. Do they have two year, four year certificates, just classes, et cetera. And they want to be as a, another resource for them for when they leave FDA and, and we're not there so that they can then take on the reins and help them succeed through school as well. I think it's incredible. I feel like with this program, you guys are really identifying the strengths in the students. You're reinforcing those strengths. And then you're really taking opportunities to improve in areas that will build and, you know, help them in, in future, you know, future endeavors. I don't want to call them weaknesses exactly, but, you know, areas where areas for growth, you guys figure those out and help build on those now in just really formative years. And they're just, they're just going to be so, um, so much the better for it when they go out in the world with whatever they do. And I feel like tying in with those, the colleges and the universities and getting that exposure for the students, it gives them, you know, it, it's almost, it, it's almost doing a, a college search exposure right there in the midst of the program um, and gives them that experience of, of interacting with the colleges and interacting and figuring out what are the, what are the pros? What are the cons? What feels good to me? What doesn't feel good? I just, I don't know. I'm trying to work through it in my brain, but it just, it's so, it's so good for them to have this and to, to have those opportunities too. Yeah. And not just locally too, you know, we've uh, previous summer camps and different events, you know, we've showed off, you know, if a lot of the students want to go down, down to some HBCUs and which ones of those actually have GIS classes? Which ones have programs? So we've mined different resources and provided those as well because you just Google a random school and try to navigate to see what they offer. It is sometimes very, very difficult to see what programs are even out there. So we want to do what we can to show all schools and universities across the country. And you know, if somebody's interested in one school, hey, Mike or Frank, does this school offer that? We are here to help them figure that out for them. I think and also to, scholarships to, and what other things, opportunities are out there for them. Sorry, Frank. No, you're good. I think to build on that, so is the as you said, you know, we we really do try to identify what their leadership capacity is at any given time, and I think Chad and the team really do a good job of of leaning into that because, as I said, it, it isn't necessarily about GIS; it's about building those leadership skills and the qualities that our young men are developing that are going to carry them throughout their career, as you mentioned, and uh, to build upon one of the things that Chad said, just on in terms of the impact that it's had, not just in the school, but in the community, I wanted to share some numbers. So this will be our upcoming uh, fourth summer camp, um, which I believe is going to be probably one of our largest when we talk about growth. Um, we are inviting folks from the community. We anticipate our students leading some of these workshops in the past where they've sat and listened and participated. We firmly believe now that they're able to lead uh, workshops on ArcGIS Online and a few other things. We have had students earn over 60 college credit hours. We've had, uh, oh, excuse me, over 60, yes, 60 college credit hours, um, over 8,000 internship hours, and over $150,000 earned in student income through grants, scholarships, work, um, other I know some of our students right now are going to be finalists, are finalists and recently presented for another uh, cash prize. You know, any way we can empower them to seek that that next opportunity and help them realize that they can climb that hill and that they have support behind them to do that. Um, that's something that we're all here um, interested in doing. And I know I know some of the students that are present. I just wanted to share one one story as an example, for instance. Right. Um, I mentioned David earlier. David is a, a great young man, one of our great leaders. And I remember when he first came in to our first summer camp, uh, he did an excellent job just as an as a incoming freshman, just paying attention, being present the whole time. And one of the things he did was won a drone that uh, the team, uh, Chad and Mike and, and OHM and the team kind of offered for um, as, as a prize. And 
that was one of the big things that uh I remember seeing David's face that day. He was super happy. He was like, oh, I want to fly this drone. And it was super exciting. And since then, David has been a great leader on the robotics team, right? That is not necessarily GIS related, but seeing him excel in the robotics space brings great value to our, our program as well. And so wherever the students are, whatever the students are interested in, whatever leadership capacity they have, our goal is to build upon that and help them realize that those skills are transferable. And what it does is it really makes our program very diverse. It makes our program very comprehensive. And then in, in addition, what ends up happening is those students then share those skills with their, with their fellow classmates. So what then happens becomes we create a great camaraderie within the school. And you, one of the things that we've heard after presentations, when folks come visit the school, et cetera, is how tight-knit of a community and the brotherhood and the, the community that is at Frederick Douglass. And again, that's a big testament to Chad and what he's doing. And um, all, all of our advisory board and trying to support the students, um, not just in their growth as scholars, but in their growth as young men and leaders for their community. And so I just wanted to share one of those stories because um, I think there are many stories like that within our program. And that's just one example of how one of our leaders has come to be. And I'm sure that he's going to continue to grow as well as the, the other young men that are on the call. I think that's amazing, Frank. You've you've talked about the summer camp, and so let's can we dig into that just a little bit more? Is that and it, it feels like this is an opportunity where the students get to show to show off kind of what's going on. You guys can show off the program. Do parents come? Is this a recruiting type event? Tell us a little bit more foundationally about what the summer camp is. Absolutely. So the summer camp we have a three day summer camp, and the summer camp is held during during um, right after the school year. You know, kind of we let students take a breather let Chad take a breather after after classes end and then we invite them to come and a lot of you know some of the folks who are students in our school maybe they bring a brother or a cousin or somebody like that so we're, we are very open because we want to make sure that everybody has access to it and also we also invite members from the community so the first two days are very skills focused we have uh you know opening presentations by OHM Romo GIS Chad sets the Chad sets the groundwork of what the expectations are. And I think that's really important too, because um, our students are there leading. And when, when you know, somebody's messing around, one of our students is like, hey, come on, we need to pay attention. You know, when things are kind of get off the rails, our students are always there to kind of help us in the room. And so there's those initial presentations about what is GIS, what is drone technology. And then we dive right into some of the skills building, ArcGIS Online, Story Maps, uh, we have a great uh, scavenger hunt kind of collector using collector app so students can go out and use their uh, their digital phone or the iPad or something like that to find different things outside in the field. A little scavenger hunt fun. Everybody's running around. It's a great time. So, you know, we don't just sit there the whole time. We make sure that students are engaged with uh, interactive activities. We have like a little lunch session where students are flying drones, doing flips, kind of showing each other how to how to use the drone. And then on the third day, and then also in those uh, first and second day, we have local speakers come in. A lot of times it's folks who have uh, a tie to Detroit or a tie to the students in terms of the, the work that they're doing. Or we also try to ensure that there's a lot of representation because as uh, Mike mentioned earlier, uh, there's not a lot of representation, uh, especially from communities of color in the uh, geospatial industry. So ensuring that we put entrepreneurs of color leaders of color in front of them so that they understand that this is also very possible for them and this is the route and the leadership route that they're on and that there are mentors like myself and others that they can look up to and see hey I can do that too you know a year a year or two ago we had a, a great leader in the geospatial industry Kendrick Faison come and he had a great impact on the students because he's a entrepreneur for for years on end and he's worked with FEMA and Department of Defense and like really big, big contracts. Uh, and our students were like, whoa, we could do that one day. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so in terms of getting them exposure to the field, getting them exposure to the leaders in the field, it's really important to ensure that they are listening, but then also that we're not just speaking at them the whole time, that they have the opportunity to find their own voice. So we end the third day with final presentations. Sometimes they're group presentations. Sometimes they are um, individual presentations but each student creates their own map, articulates what they what they designed, why they designed it. And it's really remarkable over those three days just to see how far their geospatial thinking comes, right? We talk about the leadership development. That's definitely something we see, uh, character development, definitely. 
But in, within those three days, we see students doing some brief analysis, doing some work with larger data sets from the city of Detroit, and it's remarkable to see how quickly they learn. And so on the third day, we have uh, families and community members are invited to the event. We break bread, we, ha we have the presentations, and then um, Chad always ensures that uh, we have food there so that we can all have, have a good And it's really remarkable because uh, a few times when the parents came, that, that has been the, the most moving part because they see, whoa, my student, my son can do this? I didn't know that he can do this. One time, uh, uh, an older gentleman came into the summer camp and he had a, a hat on because he had served, uh, he had served, he was a veteran. And he said, my son could do this in the army, right? And I said, absolutely. You know, there's so many opportunities that GIS opens the door to. And the, the older gentleman was like, wow, I wish I had opportunity like this. If I had opportunity like this, when I went in the service, I would have had a whole different career, et cetera. So it's not just opening the students' eyes, but opening the parents and the family's eyes so that they can, we can have this moment of intergenerational learning, but also so that there's an opportunity to continue to support our students when they're outside of the school, because we know that when they go home, they have their own support systems as well. So it's really imperative that we help the families understand the work that we're doing, because sometimes, you know, I'll go say GIS to my mom or, or my family. They're like, what is that? So it's really great to have our students um, be able to articulate that to their families. I remember I was on one call trying to get a student to the summer camp and he, he put me on the phone with his mom and he was like, um, yeah, it's for GIS and drone technology. She was like, what is that? And I was about to speak. And before I could even speak, he, was, he started to explain, well, GIS is about making maps and we fly drones so we can capture data, et cetera. And that moment, those moments right there when the students are able to articulate that to their family, to their friends, to their other colleagues and teachers, that showcases one, their understanding of it, two, their passion, and then three showcases, you know, the impact of our, our program and how it ripples out. So it's really great to have the, the three-day summer camp. We're really excited. Uh, it's coming up again here in June, and we believe this year is going to be our biggest, biggest year ever. So we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, great job, Frank. And if I could add to that, you know, it's really important having the families come in there on that last day because, you know, a lot of incoming freshmen, they don't really know the benefit or value of nine college credits, internship opportunities, coaching opportunities, career opportunities. And so hammering that home to the parents to then turn around and, and explain to their ninth grade son that, hey, this is a great opportunity because of X, Y, and Z. You're going to mature. You're going to become a leader when you go through this program really helps us. Again, we're, we have to recruit other students to come to our school um, and this is it. we bring in leaders from the space like Frank was saying city of Detroit came in with their mobile lidar trucks and we're showing that off we had a survey company come out with survey equipment we did, we did a little competition who can set up a rod and bipod the fastest like that was a lot of fun the geocaching event that Frank uh, mentioned you know that's one of my favorite things is you know I'm going out there a few of us we're placing little poker chips or whatever around the school and using field maps the students are going out there and finding it taking a picture logging it like they get really our first hands-on field training opportunity uh, using GIS. And then we raffle away gift cards to uh, people that turn in chips. And it's just a great opportunity to see that that next generation, meet those next ninth and 10th graders that'll grow up to be Zylon and Keith, Anthony and, and DeAnthony and um, Ashton and everybody in the program. It's it's a great three days. And you know we're, we're trying to get more and more different styles of GIS, you know, from planners and architects to engineers to um, community development directors. We're, we're trying to branch out and bring different facets to our program, our summer camp each year and, you know, reaching out to who we know in the space and, hey, come check out a program, be a part of this, do a presentation. And if you like it, once you get there and you see what these guys are doing and their passion that we have, that's going to want them to come back and want them to hopefully hire an in, in intern or bring in job show at shadowing opportunities or a career or funding. <laughs> and um, anybody that touches our program or sees it firsthand will fall in love with it. It's yeah, it's awesome. Or EOS for three days. There's that too. We'll touch on that later, Chad. 
so I, I loved in what Frank, you were telling us about the story with the older gentleman. It just felt like such an opportunity for, you know, intergenerational learning. If I can, if I, if I can say that it's, you're exposing not just the students, but then the parents and bringing them in and getting them on board. Because when I came home and told my parents, I was changing to GIS. My dad knew because he was in forestry. No one else had a clue. They're like, well, how are you going to make money at this? You're going to go be a geographer. And what are you doing with this? And then of course, now here we are, we, we know that, you know, GIS is absolutely a thing. It's grown in popularity and just exposure and use cases. So I'm just, I, I love that exposure to all of the different, you know, age groups when you're bringing in the parents and they're getting exposed and parents love nothing more than getting to brag on their kids too. And so getting to see their kids have successes and build that relationship. So you're building it between, you know, the, the students and their parents within the community and then, you know, the moms are going to go talk at the hair salon and the dads are going to go talk, you know, when they're at the hunting club or where, whatever they're doing, they're going to go chat about it and say, hey, my kid's doing this cool thing. Or, you know, wh wherever everybody is, they're going to be talking about it positively and just helps get word out. So, you know, I just feel like the summer camp and the fact that it's building and getting bigger and bigger is is just a testament to the work that you're putting in, but also the successes that the students are having and the hard work that they're putting in to build and grow and, you know, really learn this, you know, learn these skill sets and have those to take with them. And so they're just, they're, the students are as important in this and as impactful in the success as you guys are. And then the parents being involved, it's just one big, you know, like you said, it's a big family here and you, you need everybody working in concert to really be able to have it build up the way that it has. That's just me being an outsider looking in. One other thing, one other thing, the last, uh, last story. Um, so again, uh, last year we had, the, it's very intimate as well, right? We, we know each other so well and it is a family. And so just like with anything else, you know, there's ups and downs. And last year and during the summer camp, I know that, you know, the, the third day, there's always a, a little bit of tears in terms of people being so proud, being so happy and being moved. And I, I remember last year, you know, some of our students were speaking, uh, presenting it for the first time. And one of their parents came and she was like, I've never seen him speak like that before. I've never seen him so confident in, in articulating what he was talking about. And then just to hear that and to see that in, in the family's eyes and to see them tearing up and being like, wow, this is really something that's making an impact. That, that, that's the reward for us, you know, to see that impact on the family and people's lives. That's something that's really, really valuable. And then on top of that, when we had students who maybe were struggling to present or were having trouble or sharing something, uh, a struggle in their own life, we see our community come together, right? We had multiple people step up and say, hey, I got your back. Hey, I'm here for you. Let me help you out. And again, those moments are where we really see that that growth and that the reality of what the program is about, right? It's about those connections. It's about this network. It's about the family ecosystem that we're building. And to see people stepping up for one another, especially when it's difficult. Hey, somebody gets a bad grade. Hey, don't worry about it, man. We get it next time. Oh, I crashed the drone. Hey, it's okay, man. It happens. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, we can fix it. And so just helping students uh, overcome some of those obstacles, whether that's at home or at school, and also interpersonal things where we're working together to overcome, that makes us stronger. And it's really beautiful to see that because I think the summer camp is where everybody's just all hands on deck. Everybody's here. We're proud to present our school. And as we present to other people, we're interested in bringing them into the fold and saying, hey, you're welcome in our community as well. And we're here to support you. We're here to teach you. We got your back. And so, again, the students are um, really excited to hear from them because they have a lot to offer um, in terms of that leadership and that perspective. Frank, I just love that so much. And, you know, Chad, you kind of feel like the dad to the crew here. You sort of feel like the the dad for the students and you know, helping build them up for, you know, just everything that they're going to need. So I know, I know that they appreciate you and appreciate the, the foundations that you, all of you guys are providing for them. Um, you know, I think it's, I just think it's great that you guys are giving, giving back to the community the way that you are and building them up. Um, so. I'm, I'm a, I'm a better person because of them. I'll tell you that. <laughs> they're amazing. And I am I can't wait any longer to talk to them. So students, if you're ready, we're going to transition to to all of you and hear a bit about what you guys think about the program. So um, Keith, if it's okay, I think I'm going to start with you. Is that cool? Are you good with that? Yeah. Um, hello. Uh, hi. 
tell us tell us about the classes that you're taking and kind of just your general thoughts on the program. So I've, as of right now, I don't remember the last three numbers of my class. Uh, 301? 301? Okay, so I'm taking GEOG 301 with uh, mm-hmm. Professor Henry. Um, and uh, we've been working on like extracting data from sources outside and, and getting our own data um, to put together maps. Uh, right now we're working on a story map that is discussing uh, hunger, hunger in Detroit. Yeah, hunger and poverty index in Detroit. This, this is my teammate for the for the project as, uh, as well. Um, Dusty Anthony, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Hi, D. Anthony. <laughs> and, and I, I enjoy the program. Uh, like I said, I've I've been in it for four years. Uh, I, I believe we started working with Eastern, um, my tenth grade year, and that has, like, molded me into a more, GIS work base ready person. Um, I have the experience. Uh, I have the knowledge of you know a, a college student. I guess maybe an, an intermediate uh, GIS uh, analyst or GIS uh, uh, analyst. analyst. Yeah. yeah. Um, and those are just my insights. That's just what I I've noticed and picked up from the program so far. Hey, Anthony, what about you? What What are your thoughts on the program? Um, my thoughts on the program. Um, to be honest. I had so coming in, we were virtual my ninth grade year, and I only had secrets class for about two to three weeks, and I got pulled out to take another class. So, um, like I said, Keith was my first friend here at Frederick Douglass because when we was virtual, I would always ask him, "What are we doing stuff?" And then we ended up meeting over the summer because we had the same summer job. But moving forward, it was the uh, first week of school, and secrets was asking people if they wanted to come back to the program. And I was kind of, I was kind of wonky about it. And then, you know, he ended up signing me up when I was like, I was like, nah. And, uh, he had your back. He knew, he knew where you needed to be, right? He had yeah, yeah. <laughs> going, going into the program, I was one of those kids. I'm like, I'm not smart enough to do this. I don't, I don't think I got the brains to do this. I, I can't do this computer coding map from scratch. I, I, I just can't do it. This ain't me. And I, uh, I sat down with Mr. Sigris because I was I was concerned. Um, because I have he was telling me about the opportunities and what could happen, but I was I was like maybe, but we got enough students to do this. He he gave he gave me a pep a prep talk. He said I I I could pull you from this class, but you I'm not gonna pull you from this class. But you thinking that you aren't smart enough to do this? And he said I love you. And then I I stayed in the program. So moving forward, I, um, I started doing, I started going to this class, going to the office hours, making sure I understood the program, um, building a relationship with the students around me. Um, then eventually, you know, I became friends with uh with Zylon. And um I seen like Zylon was doing um the student council and stuff. And we were like, we come from like a similar background. So I saw him as if he if he can do all this coming from where I come from, I can do this as well. And then the rest of my classmates, Brandon, Isaac, Ben, they they're they're like awesome. They're do, I'm hearing them doing all this good stuff, and we're we're all just at the same school. I'm I'm thinking like, oh, I got to do more. Like these these kids are awesome. So I started I started pushing myself. Um, I ended up joining the robotics team. Cause of, uh, cause of Zylon, he was, he was like, he was like, he was like, yeah, this is fun. I used, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm not doing robotics. Robotics ended up being fun. I ended up learning how to code, getting into new stuff. So moving forward, uh, you know, Secrets used used to have me, um, you know, cause I was a student ambassador in training in tenth grade. So he used to have me talk to the guests and greet the guests and present what you know, small increments of projects we're working on, like HEO maps and things like that. And um, it, it just helped me become a better speaker because. Ninth grade year, I was diagnosed with antisocial and social anxiety, and I was prescribed medicine. So, me just being a part of this program, we didn't just learn GIS. We learned skills that, like life skills, brotherhood skills. We even had we even had female figures a part of this program that helped mold me. So, um, I learned I could I I broke it 
like the the anti-social barrier that I had, I, I broke it. I say 11th grade year. I could, I think I could speak to anyone I see because I um this program has gave me the uh the confidence and it also equipped me with the skills that I need. So um moving forward, 12th grade year, this is probably my most hungry year I've had this whole my whole high school experience because this is it's crunch time. I'm I'm trying to I want to go to college. I got I got great friends supporting me. I know what I want to do. I got my support staff. I got um I got Romo GIS behind me. I got Chad Sigurds behind me. I got OHM behind me. I got Keith behind me. I got Zylon behind me. I got I got all yes, I got everything I, I need. I got everything I need behind me as a support system just in case anything go, goes wrong. I could call Frank three in the morning. I call Sigurds three in the morning. And they're always gonna answer and help me with anything. I I come to these guys not just about not just about schoolwork, but I come to them about female problems, um, problems going on in the house, uh, getting to school, you know, things like that. Because you know we we take the bus, so you know the, sometimes the bus situation isn't always the best. But you know, so yeah, so like I said, me and Keith is working. Me, Keith, and Isaac is working on a, um a story map where we where we. The uh, requirement was we had to put five AGO maps. Read up. We had to put five AGO maps minimum into it, and we had to tell a story. So we were we we focused on the poverty and um the the uh, hunger in Michigan, but we focused on Detroit. But we you know we did the data for every single state just about so. This is, I think, we're we're just about finished. We're doing some last edits, but this is probably gonna be my hugest project I ever done because I, the limit was five. I did around maybe ten maps. So that's amazing. I think um I plan to uh put this out on my LinkedIn really soon. Like I said, I didn't even know how important LinkedIn was last year. Um, th- last year was the first time I met Frank in person. So. Everyone else knew Frank, but I didn't know Frank because I wasn't a part of the program in ninth grade year. So I didn't go to the summer camp because I didn't know nothing about it or anything like that. So I met Frank for the first time last year in January in person. He was telling me about LinkedIn and he was on my, he was like, man, you need to get on LinkedIn. This is important. I was like, man, it's just the app. I I downloaded LinkedIn, started (laughs) posting. I made my first, I think I made my first post, our, um, our summer camp last year. And I, I gained a bunch of traction and a bunch of people were like liking my posts and giving me tips and just telling me and providing me with paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and information. Someone even sent me a free GIS course to take through their uh through their program, which was really awesome. cool. Mm-hmm. It was um it, it showed me how to uh how to use geomorphic index data and um on heat maps. It for free. It was hundred percent free. Just just because I made a post and they saw it and they they thought it was really nice. So moving forward, I've um I've been using I'm I'm a LinkedIn guru now. Like it's, I'm always on LinkedIn. I think we need, um, we need to connect, the we, Anthony. If we're not for connected. Sure, for sure. We need to get connected. For sure. But yeah, like moving forward, LinkedIn guru. Every time we were at a conference and someone was a speaker, I made sure I got their LinkedIn. I um made a I made I made plenty of plenty of plenty of posts. I made I've gotten like many many gis internship offers just and i just got my my uh my linkedin last year i think i got around 215 220 connections in just one year and i say i say at least 100 of those connections i asked in person for people's linkedin so i realized how important it was and the amount of doors that me having linkedin got me into like the um a, like a, a month or two ago, we had this thing called Threads to Success. It was a program, and I was in there, and people already knew who I was because they saw me on LinkedIn and they saw a testimony that I uh that I sent to Secrets, and they they've seen you know because I'm putting my name out there, and they people knew who I was, and I never even saw them before, and it, and it and I ended up winning a, the thousand dollar scholarship there as well. So I think the um LinkedIn is really important with um with fake facial recognition you just having a good face card and everything and everything like that so yeah uh i think this program this program isn't just about gis ago computer science but it's just it's about brotherhood family like i'm I, like i made my family that i'm gonna have for the rest of my life here 
not just the students, the adults. Like I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at Frank, I'm gonna be at Frank Cookout this time. I'm gonna be at Secrets Cookout this time. I'm, you know, so we fit, we fit to go to a baseball game tomorrow. You know, cause this is, this isn't just a a, a school oriented thing. This is family. This is, this is everything to me. I love that so much. I just want to give you a hug right now, D. Anthony. Like if we were right there, I'd just give you a big hug. You're so cute. <laughs> yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. But I love your story too. That's amazing. And I love how the the leaders here and as well as the students, you guys just all build each other up so much and it just make such a good, you know, just a good commu- such a good community that you might not otherwise have. And so um I'm curious and I'm coming I'm coming to you in just a second, Zyla. I don't think I've forgotten about you or David or, or the others, but do you think that, you know, the foundations that you're, that they're laying for you now and the connection that you feel, if you stay in the Detroit area, do you feel like you'll pour back into um, the, the academy and the school? I would, you know, do you see yourself potentially coming back as, you know, as, as alumni from the program and, you know, meeting with potential students down the line or maybe giving presentations? Do you see yourself pouring back in and giving back to, to this program, even, you know, years after you, you, graduated and moved on i'm glad you asked oh my god i'm glad you asked that question so me zylon keith and ashton are um we plan on uh building a um a nursing slash you know uh like a medical school like a like, like a, a medical, school medical school for um for for younger students and we plan on being funded by grants you know similar to this program so we will uh, we will want to offer you know uh classes for um like dps schools schools based in detroit then eventually expand off into michigan and we also want to do um oriented scholarships for students at frederick douglas as well so we want to do essay scholarships and scholarship so if you're enabled to entity and you you uh you submit us an essay on a uh, a topic question we're gonna pick the you know the best anthony because that name's semi um semi common so we want to uh want to do the anthony scholarship as well but yeah we want to come back and do scholarships we're going to still well, i plan to still be a part of the uh advisory board so i still want to um support my school even even where i'm when i'm in um college i'm gonna come back and um visit i'm gonna donate money i'm a you know i'm gonna still be making posts about school i'm gonna still do gis in college like i'm gonna be making maps and stuff um because my uh my account will be continued, so I, I'm gonna still use a bunch of um I'm gonna still use a bunch of GIS programs, and I'm gonna like make a bunch of maps just to you know point towards my school. We um me and Zyline worked on a a bus route map for because we take the bus to school like we and we recently moved from Warren and 21st or 22nd, and now we're on the east side of Woodward and. Detroit. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's this. It's a. It's a. It's like pretty far, not like far as in distance, but out the way far. So the bus routes are different for students. We got a lot of students that take public transportation to school. So as we, as I said, we was in our um, we was our three, we was in our three day summer camp. Me and um, me and Zylon worked on something. Me, Zylon, and Ashton worked on something previous to previous to this using um uh using someone else's data we didn't we didn't make our own data but it was for um it was for our capstone last year and we we said as a joke me and Zyline said as a joke like oh what if we what if we use this to make a um make a bus ride map make it easier for the students to bus ride and we was we were laughing about it then frank came in <laughs> you guys can do that and then he started ex- <laughs> he started explaining to us what we could do and then he told <laughs> us he, he, was like, he was like he was like all right let's make it happen we we not, we not thinking Frank was serious. Two weeks later, get a call, ring ring. Yeah, man. So um, remember when you guys were telling me about this bus ride map? He got all the addresses of all the students that were going to the school and our new students that weren't even there yet. And we started working on the bus map. I I say September seventh. We started working on it. Um, September seventh, and it took us I say about twenty to twenty to thirty hours of work or something mm-hmm. like that. And we um we took all the addresses, we geo coded them so you don't get the exact address because you know we don't want no one to have someone's exact address as long as you got the area, you know what bus you're taking. 
So mm-hmm. you know, we just highlighted that to make sure it was easy because, you know, it's been times where me and Zyline got on the wrong bus and didn't get home to like 11 o'clock and our phones was dead and parents was worried and we don't want no other student to go through something like that. So as long as they have something like this, they'll be able to develop it. And we also plan to make more maps for the students because we just got public transport, uh, not, not public transportation, but we got a bus for students because they know that uh, a lot of students take public transportation. So we just got, um, we're getting a, we're getting a yellow bus next year to pick up our students. So we just want to keep doing other things to help our community. Like we got a, um, we got a green team, you know, making our, uh, making our property more pretty. <laughs> so we, we plan on making a map on that thanks uh, land, landscaping type stuff is that yes you mean? ma'am we okay. also um recently just uh we set a drone autonomous and we put uh chevrons around our school uh, um we put a drone autonomous to take a bunch of pictures around it and we put it into um arcgis pro uh i think ray littlebridge helped us with that we put it into um arcgis pro and we uh found out like what's around us, what's in it. And then um, Michael Cousins had, a. this is how important connections is. Michael Cousins was able to get data from a company that he recently worked with from our area. Cause I said, um, we recently just, we recently just got it. Um, we just, we recently just moved here. So Michael Cousins had a connection who was also, they were also working on this area and they got connections. I think it was, was it the pipelines, Mike? Or was it the, what was it, Mike? You don't remember? <laughs> we were. Uh, Mike said he got some data and gave it to you to play with. But. Yeah, yeah. He um he 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 contact he contacted a company. They already had a Chevron on the ground, and mm-hmm. I guess he he already recognized it or something. And he um he emailed them like a few weeks because we had EOS come to our school, and he was able to get some data that we put from um from this app that EOS was developing, and we were able to put it on there, and then we were end up able to transfer it to ArcGIS Pro. But yeah, that's um but yeah, we end up we we are planning on doing a bunch of stuff for this school to keep just to just for just to keep students strive um to strive. Like this quarter I'm um I'm buying pizza for all the students that get a 3.0 and higher on their uh report card. So you know like that's amazing. Stuff like this. I'm just doing I'm just doing what I can right now, but I plan to do a lot more because students need that type of motivation work sometimes because I've been that student before so yeah and I also plan to be a student that uh kids can call if they need any help or anything like right now like I donate my last hour of school to help the the um the ninth graders with their um ArcGIS um assignments and I also donate my uh my sixth hour as well to help anybody with presentations and public speaking because I know it's it's harder to speak in a room full of less people than it is to speak in front of a room full of a, a hundred people. So yeah, but yeah, that's Anthony, thank you for gonna, asking me that. Absolutely. I really, I really, I really wanted you to ask me that question because we, we really, <laughs> we really was talking about this at like three in the morning about what we wanted to do in the future. So y'all are so cute. I love that. And the other, you're gonna mess around and end up on the sales team at Esri if you keep keep going forward, because you know, we could, we could definitely put you out there and get you selling stuff. <laughs> okay advocating <laughs> thank you thank so, you <laughs> so Zylon, let me hear from you i want to know about your thoughts on the program and you know kind of what drew you to it and why were you interested all of that kind of good stuff so it all started for me my ninth grade year coming into it like virtually the mission secrets at first i was kind of like uh what is this what's going on He's like arcgis download pro your computer i'm all like i'm 14 i'm half asleep we just come off the COVID year i'm like i know this guy's talking we had to do a capstone um story map on like what like something we want to see different in our community or something that we thought would make our community better and i made a map and a story map on that and that really like drew me into GIS because I really like wanted to make a difference in my community and really want to see a change so that other youth could like be inspired and felt safe coming around or just walking around the neighborhoods and things of that nature. And that's where I also met uh, Frank Romo. I met Frank Frank Romo during the summer camp of my ninth grade year. And through Chad Seegers, I was able to be the face of DPS on the magazine and get it put into a commercial and things of that nature. And that was kind of like my startup into GIS and re- me getting familiar with Mr. Seegers. And then coming into 10th grade, 
I was very eager to get get into like the really the death of like GIS. Then I signed up for the Easter uh dual enrollment because I was like, need them college credits that take time away. That's money in the pocket. You know, I said less time in college as well. And um, that's also where I started taking on my student ambassador role. I got involved in robotics. Uh, we made our NAF accounts. Like we really started learning the importance of connections and making connections and maintaining relationships and making relationships. I wasn't like the best presenter, I would say, but I always knew how to talk, but I never really had the confidence to really like get in front of people like, oh yeah, my name is Highline Holes and this, that, and, you know, like really, yeah. It's, Yes, you did. No, yes, no. You did. Well, you, you had a good, you did a good job of hiding it. Okay? <laughs> you was born to do this. Uh, so that that tenth grade year, I was able to hone my leadership skills, my presenting skills, my GIS skills, and really like be more involved in my school in my community. Through that, um, that tenth grade summer, I signed up for the Nat Future Ready Scholar Summer Camp Program at the University of Michigan where me and Anthony stayed for two weeks. And we were able to kind of get the college experience, see how it would be staying on campus and being away from home. And we were also introduced, to, we had to make uh, projects. Like what was the project on that, that year? Um, you, had a, you had to make a business plan that involved uh, social justice. Yeah. And um, you had to, how you would develop it with like how social media was moving and stuff like that. Cause the trajectory of social media got really bad after that COVID year. So we just were talking about how we would redevelop it using, you know, the four core classes that we put in. So. Yeah, yeah. And now that, that was something that, that was like my 10th grade year. I also worked with UAD Mercy, where we um, worked with, a re we did a research project on um, gardens and certain insects and how they affected gardens and how they affected the trees and which ones were like native to the gardens and which ones are native to certain trees. It was it was a cool science project. I would say I love that. And um, going into my 11th grade year, my confidence was really at an all time high. I felt like I was a great leader, um, a great mentor. A lot of the kids like looked up to me or asked me just, how do you speak so well? Or what made you get into GIS? Or can you help me with this math? And I felt like, my younger me like was really proud of that because coming into high school, um, I was a I never had got a three point zero before, and a lot of people never believed in me, and I didn't think that I was capable of this leadership. I didn't think I was capable of making maps, let alone getting into the sciences, coding, um, getting my own data, learning how to extract data, learning how to even um format it in Google Excel or Microsoft Sheets to make it in, to put it into the map or make it a CSV. So all of that was like really important to me. I think that was one of our biggest years, I would say, because that was a year where we were invited out to New York for the, what what year was that? It was the NAF annual benefit. The, the NAF annual benefit where we were able to present our NAF Academy and our program and what we do. Me, Keith, Ashton, and one of our, one of our classmates named Steve Jones. And we've really showcased ourselves there. We also were the only like male school there. So that was really big too. Um, coming off of the New York trip, going into my 11th grade summer, we, me and Deanthi did our last year with the NAF Future Ready Scholar Summer Camp. And through that summer, through that summer our, we worked on a project, uh, for our project, we made an app called Food Geek. And Food Geek was kind of based on like, getting better food accessibility for minority communities are just communities that have lack of like better resources because usually when food trucks come in, they go to the suburban areas and they come to the city last and the city is always getting the run thought, run down, picked over stuff, or stuff that people already looked at and just like, oh yeah, we know this is not, this is not fresh, this is not good. Because something for me, like one of my local grocery stores, it had like rotten fruit in there and some of the meat, like you could just smell it, the plastic was open. I was, I was like, no, we need to make an app or something like how people can grow their own fruits, grow their own vegetables, and also find places where they can get fresh meat and fresh produce and garden seeds. And um, I coded the database and then DeAnthony made like the, the, the user interface where you can slide across, click down, see what you want to see. And he also put the stores on there. Like that was really one of our, uh, one of my funnest projects with him. 
And, uh, you know, he told you about the bus map and stuff. That was really something that we uh, got into. Like, 10th grade, it was kind of, it also started off, like, as a little joke. Because we, like, we took some data from um, DDOT, Detroit, the Department of uh, Transportation. They had some bus route maps on there. And we were trying to, like, make maps out of it, but we couldn't access the data. And we didn't really, like, fully know how to make our own map out of it. So we kind of, like, that. that's where the idea, like, really got started. And then we kind of really made all that happen, like he said, in the start of our senior year. And then coming into my senior year, oh, we also did the Boys and Girls Club drone internship where we worked with younger youth in our community off of Tyreman and Southfield, which is like a really um, lower income community. So we really like want to expose them to GIS as a career and what it could do to, for them. And also show them like, it's people like people that look like them, showing them that they can do it, showing them that they can make a change for themselves or even in their family. Because a lot of kids, they're exposed to certain things. They may not have a father figure. They may not have a big brother they can look up to, a big sister they can look up to, or just a mentor in general. So when we go to that, when we went to the Boys and Girls School, we really was trying to be that big brother to them, show them what GIS could do, show them what drones could do, and also to show them the fun of it and the money that they can make. And I felt like uh, that was really fun, too, being around the kids. They loved it. Um, I think they love it this year as well because they did ask us to come back. And we do want to make this a... Um, on ongoing thing for underclassmen and many more years to come. Going into my um, my senior year, I would say I was like, I did everything. Uh, this is where I kind of like started like kind of stepping down more because I like, I want the underclassmen to start stepping up more because I know that I'm about to graduate out of the pathway and I know that I will be leaving school soon. So I don't want the school to always feel like they had to depend on me. I want them looking to the next generation of leaders and nurture the other underclassmen. I will always be here as a mentor, as someone that can ask questions, someone that can help guide them, because that's what that's what I want to be. But I definitely didn't want to always be in the spotlight. I want to share the spotlight with my classmates, with my peers, and help them gain exposure, help them put their name out there, help them make connect connections, and also help them figure out like what they want to do in life. Because for me, you know, I want to go to a four-year university, major in biology, and I want to become a dentist. But the way I want to use GIS with, and that is, I want to take um, surveys from all my patients and all my customers and see their insurance, their income. And then I want to make an estimated analysis on how I would charge them based off of that. Because I don't want to charge a lower income family the same amount of money I'm charging a middle class or a higher class family. Because sometimes it's not always about the money. So that's why I really want to go into dentist, dentistry because I know that teeth is a very big part of like you having self-confidence, you even presenting yourself, or you even want to be around people in general. So that is something that I want to go into really bad, and I will. And I will use GIS going into it into the future. So I do want to open my own dental practice to employ more Black dentists and Black doctors. You're so driven, Zylon. I, you just, <laughs> that's amazing. And, you know, you're right. It's not always about the money. And I love that you're wanting to you know, you're wanting to give back to the community that's given given to you now. It's it's built you up, and you're trying to pay pay that back. And but you're also, you know, you have a you have this goal to really provide a healthcare service to an area and make it affordable for them for people that might not otherwise have it. And so, you know, like you said, you know, your teeth are important. They're important from you know just a health for health, you know, fundamentals of health, like having yeah. having healthy teeth and having healthy you know, um, uh, you know, healthy mouth and everything is, is important from, from your health and your, your self-confidence and kind of how you present yourself and other opportunities, you know, potentially that you might have. So I just, I think that's so, so amazing that you want to use GIS and use the things that you've learned in that type of field down the line and have such big dreams. And I have no doubt that you will achieve all of them because you seem like you are so, you know, so driven and so, um, focusing on the path of I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to be somebody and I'm going to be successful after all these people have, you know, poured into you. I, I can tell you want to, to take it all the way. <laughs> Thank you. And um, when it comes down to the mentors in this program, they were, they are amazing people. These are some of the greatest men I've met in my life from Mr. Segrist to Frank Romo to even Michael Cousins. Mr. Segrist, no, like I'd be throwing it down on the food, man. Like, he always is feeding me. He's like, you know, Zyline to do it. All he needs is some food. You know, that's all he needs. That's all he needs. So, you know, Mr. Seagus always looked out for me, always made sure I had something on my stomach and always made sure I stayed on task. 
And Frank Romo, on the other hand, was like a big brother for me because like for me, I didn't really have my big brother around me a lot. And our relationship was not the best, but with Frank, I was able to get that big brother experience. And he always motivated me, told me I had it in me, told me to always believe in myself, never doubt myself. He always told me to not only self-advocate for myself, but learn how to also advocate for others and also help others advocate for themselves. And then Michael Cousins, he always made sure when he came in for my interviews, he always made sure to ask the right questions and ask them the right way so he can really imitate that real interview experience. And he always made sure that our why was a strong why whenever we want to know what we want to do in life and how we want to go into it. He always asked it strongly and then went into the details of it and would make us break down how that went. And he's very funny, <laughs> very funny. Like, um, I think a couple months back, we sat in, I think January, we sat in a G, uh, GIS conference at uh, Michigan State, or Michigan State, or the capital, the capital. No, it wasn't Michigan State. Yeah, I think it was. State of Michigan. Yeah. Yep. State of, State of Michigan uh, GIS meeting where we were able to like showcase our school and showcase things that we do, me and DeAnthony with Michael. And um, he also gave us a little tour of how he was in college and his Hagar spots, <laughs> which is a real, real cool, funny experience. Um, and I'm also a GIS specialist at Romo GIS. And I will be doing the Boys and Girls Club this summer while also working at OHM Advisors this summer. Oh, that's awesome. So you're already, you know, out there working and you're going to be back on the advisory team or, or add, adding yourself to the advisory team, I guess, is how I should put that. You're, you're staying involved is where, where, I'm, yes. where I'm going. Sorry, Zyla, my yes. brain went all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like overall the program has helped me become a great young man has prepared me for my future. It has really set me up like with the connections and the mindset to where I can go into almost anything that I really want to do in life, no matter if it's trades, no matter if it's college. Because like one thing that I noticed about this program and this school, we don't want to force you to go to college. We don't want to force you to go to trades, but we do set you up to make sure that you're not just, after you graduate, you're not just going out on the street with a diploma. You have something and you have a foundation. Because a lot of high schools, they just give kids their diplomas, and it's like, you figure it out from there. Here at Frederick Douglass in this GIS Pathways program, we, they, they do set you up and put you up with, on your feet and make sure you have a head start ahead of other high schoolers. That's awesome. I love it so much. Okay, D David and Devin, can I head to, to you guys? Can I come, come over to y'all and chat with you for a couple minutes? So let me um, let me start with you. Uh, David, if you don't mind, um, let me tell me about your ex experience with the program, and I want to know about the robotics a little bit too. I'm going to ask you about that as well, but let me know your thoughts on the program. My thoughts, well, my thoughts on the program. I came in in the summer camp. I was sitting there at the old Frederick Douglass. We, I had Michael Cousins talking to me and Ray. The more the part that like really interested me into the program was when Ray started talking about their drones because that's what I like. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, that's what the drones part really interests me into this program. It made me, it showed me what I wanted to do in the future when it came down to a job because I wanted to be honest, I wanted to be a police officer, I didn't think about this. So, the, the drone part like really helped me. This program in general really helped me, showed me what I wanted to do. It made me talk more because I never, and like back then, I'd never see myself doing this. It builds you up as a role model and like, just like a big brother, as they said. I enjoyed the fact of doing, like making the maps. I'm very easy with that. That's very easy to me. Like, that's why I want to, besides construction, I want to do that as like a little side hustle, build maps for people. Because mm -hmm. it's just like, it's, it's easy to me. And I like helping people, like the new people that come in, if they like ask for help on the maps, I can help them, I can show them where to go and like how to use it and work around the errors because not everything is perfect, but yeah. And with robotics, I'm the team manager. Um, I'm the builder, coder, whatever you need me to do, I can get it done. Any more questions? 
what do you yeah I have, what do you think about kind of gis and robotics is there a place for for those to overlap what do you think that would look like and how might that work so I'm, go, I'm going off script here for you, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> for, for the overlap? Mm -hmm. um, probably like where? It's, I wouldn't say our team personally used that. Mm -hmm. But like I watch videos about robotics and some of the technology that they use can like overlap like to the GIS area. Mm -hmm. Um. Hopefully, this this next coming year we get to have that access to the technology like that. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I'm actually working on a sponsorship with OHM. I talked to Ray Littlebridge about it, and just like I'm telling them why we should have a sponsorship because at Inside Robotics, if you don't have like if you don't have a lot of money or a lot of access to money. It's, it's like it's kind of paid to win. If if I do say so myself, it's an expensive. It's it's expensive to be in it too. I've got a friend of mine. Her kids are in robotics, and we didn't have that when I was in school. So I don't have you know personal hands on experience. But I know that she talks about how it it's it's not a it's not a cheap endeavor to go into. So I can see where that kind of plays into a part. And having a a sponsorship for that would be super beneficial. Any more questions? Um. I will be working with the Boys and Girls Club this this year. I'll be going to uh for two weeks I'll be going to Michigan, staying on their campus. Nav the it's called the Nav Futurary Scholars. I I just enjoy this program. It's like it's I never just I never would have seen myself doing this. My cousin actually told me to come to the school. I got interviewed. My the person that interviewed me told me about the summer internship program, and I did that. And like the rest is history, really. What do you feel like for you personally? Your long term benefits are going to be. I mean, we talked about you know the growth opportunities and so many things you know throughout the podcast. But for you personally, how do you feel like this is setting you up for success? What I feel like is setting me up for success, like me able to like talk to you guys i want to be more fluent at it and i know this program will get me there the ability to make maps how i do how i do it and i will say like the leadership skills the leadership skills because i know like this year robotics was a little bit harder so i had to like put more lead i'm not I don't really see myself as a leader. I'm trying to build up to that. But this year in robotics, it really like made me see that role and made me have to play play more into it. You're a leader in training, David. We I can see it. <laughs> you just Thank gotta you. develop the skill sets a little bit. Are you still interested in law enforcement? Is that something you're still interested in at all? No, not really. Okay. I just, I want to do this as my future. Have you thought about any GIS applications for topics or things that might cross over or could be beneficial for people in law enforcement? Have you done any research in that space? I mean, I know they just added this new thing. It's come, actually coming to Detroit. It's like, it's, it's to stop. Well, it's not to stop, but like, it's a thing that hooks up to people's cars when they're chasing them. And I feel like that can you that uses G somewhere in the system it uses GIS with it. What about G what is it about GIS that you've enjoyed so much? What do you like about making maps? Um I don't know. It just it's just easy. Other people other people <laughs> may like they may like struggle with it. I guess like helping other people, helping other people and know that I understand how to make the map. I guess that's what strives me to do GIS. Can I call you guys for help? Cause I struggle with it. I, I, I need, I need, I need Zahwan and I need David and Keith and the Anthony and Devin. I need y'all's help. <laughs> you guys are awesome though. So thank you. Mm -hmm.
Okay, Devin, can can I chat with you for a few minutes? Will you tell me a little bit about what it is that you like about the program and kind of how you felt moving through it, how you got into it, all the things? Um, I've been here since the seventh grade. I had to leave one year, eighth grade, because it's switched to high school. Um, but when I when I was here for the seventh grade, I was in a on a robotics team that so I met Seagrass. So yeah, I did that. GIS really is not my strong suit, but they, my mentors, Michael, um, Mr. Segris, and Frank, they, they, they literally like everything that I, I'm, I can do. They, they make sure I can be fit into the situation, like the um, green, the uh, Earth Day. He seen my strong suit and what I can do. He put me in a position that, that I'll be able to use my strong suit. And yeah, that's, I, I, they, they really are some good mentors for real. They understand, they, they motivate, they don't ever talk down, they motivate me. Um, but back to the GIS, um, I know how to map because I took the classes. But I'm not the best of it. But I can use what they taught me for something that I would want to do in the future. Like I want to get into real estate, and then I want to um, be a landscaper. And I can use the mapping skills to find locations, and I've already been starting doing that on my own. So yeah, it's really helpful. And then I'm more of a quiet person. I don't talk as much. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm scared, but I know Mrs. Severs would be like, "You got to do it." So yeah, I'm I'm gonna do it because I got it. <laughs> and yeah, they you're, they got me out there. The, mm -hmm. You're doing great. Yeah. Um. What do you What do you feel like for the future? How do you feel like this is prepping you for the future? And you know, as far as you know, community involvement and giving back. What are your thoughts on how do you feel like you may plug in later once, you know, I know you're not quite, you're, you're not quite ready to graduate, but after you graduate, do you think you'll come back? Yeah, so um, I can use this for the future and for the community, like I stated. Mm -hmm. I can use the mapping to find locations that uh, are where I can build property that is, is needed for people. And, um, prices and stuff like that we can, I can use the map just to find that information and then see what I'm working with before I even go to the location and see what I gotta do you know yeah what about as far as like the the program in general what kind of bigger picture with the program um outside of the GIS all the other things that they're you know teaching you and pouring into you and prepping for you do you feel like you are you know, becoming more and more ready to either go to college or go whatever, you know, whatever direction that you want to go after graduation. How do you feel like the attention that, um, you know, Mike, Frank, and Chad pour into you and kind of build up your skill sets and all, how do you feel like you're going to be able to take those and, and run with them when you get, uh, when you get out in the world? Um, like I said, they motivated me to do a lot of stuff that I'm scared to do, like talk in front of a big crowd or like, Mr. Sears had let me go on his field trip with him for the GIS day. And it was kind of scary for me because it's, it's, it was a lot of people in it. I'm not good with a big crowd. And then I did my interview and I was able to talk to the people and actually get, tell them the type of information I know I learned from Mr. Sears. Yeah. And then, like, the Fox 2 news, it's, it's really with my communication. I'm not a good communicator. Yes, you are. But they help me. Yes, they help me. They, they help me get there. They help me talk to you today. <laughs> good. I was Tell scared. me. Oh, don't be scared. Don't be scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Earth Day. Michael tells me that you were so, you know, involved and that you did such a good job during Earth Day. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Oh, so um I really didn't help so with the mapping part, but I've looked at the map after it got done. I was more of a hard worker. 
I, I like exactly. Work. Tell yeah, me about I mean, that. Tell me about the hard worker part. What were you doing? I was um. I was, I don't even, it was a lot. I was you know, breaking stuff. It, it was just. I, they told me they gave me an assignment. I did it, and I ain't stop until I got done because once I put my mind to something, I don't want to just stop it because Mr. Segrist told me he taught me to keep us going. They don't not stop or give up or something this type of stuff. You gotta keep going. Gotta keep moving forward. So yeah, I just they gave me the assignment. I did it. And then stop until it was complete, and I still got some more to do. <laughs> you sound you sound dedicated and driven. Like you sound like you really want to finish something that you started. What you start? Yeah. Oh, he's okay. got a new nickname. <laughs> uh, some other students got jealous over it. I think. Yeah. Isn't that right, Dave? <laughs> uh, you're not. Uh, they both worked hard, but uh, he's he's uh, Devin Dundeal Smith. You give him a task. It's a done deal. Nice. And, uh, thing, every time you looked over, he was he was on point. He he just he just gets to the grind. He doesn't let other things. Uh, you know, he's not one to go running out into a parking lot and falling around and playing chase like speed bump over there. I'll explain that one. Uh, that's David's new nickname. I'll let you guys know later. But uh, um, Devin Bless. is a hard worker. Um, He's on this call for the, just for the fact that he's not comfortable speaking and, and with others. But as you can tell, he does just fine. And he's going to be given a lot more opportunities to do it. <laughs> and uh, uh, so. He was Absolutely. out there working with our president, VP of marketing, a few others working, pulling weeds. He was talking the whole time. We had really great conversations. He was always moving around doing stuff, which went noticed, you know, he, he, he showed that leadership skills in that standpoint where he had that task, he did the task and he kept with it and he wasn't screwing around, which was fantastic. So good job, Devin. It was noticed, noticed by everybody else. And that was awesome. That's another thing about my mentors, Mr. Seegers, Frank and uh, Michael, they always, they, they know, they see that my strong suit isn't with the mapping. It's more of Working so they they help they fit me in to where I can work and be able to cooperate with them, you know. So that's that's why I like the uh, program because of that same reason. I ain't gotta be too good at the mapping for them to still treat me like the rest, you know. Thank you all for this uh, opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to share our stories and share our voice and empower us. We really appreciate uh, you guys speaking to us. Absolutely. Um, I'm kind of curious for from uh, from the seniors. So, it, you know, whichever of you guys want to want to take this one, um, you're the first cohort of students to graduate from the program, as far as I understand it. Are there any changes that you would make to the program if you were in Frank, Michael, and Chad's shoes? What are you guys, as having moved through the program and, and about to be graduates of it, what would you guys change, if anything? Uh, what I would change about the program, I think I would change. I would um, expand it to more colleges because we were working through Eastern Michigan. So I would say I would want to expand it to more colleges and probably when we're going out of um we're going on out of state conferences maybe like try to fight for that so more students can get that because um sometimes the district wants to know a year ahead but we don't always get notice a year ahead so i think we should just see if we could get like a um maybe like a like a paper signed or something to where just in case something does come up we can give them a few months notice and students will be able to go to the out of town conferences because that's like a big, big experience. And, you know, just the GIS lifestyle, you know, we were, when we went out of town, like when me, Frank and Zylon went out of town to Ohio to speak at the Ohio conference, the GIS 2023 conference, uh, it was, it was a really great experience. We got to shake a lot of hands and meet a lot of people from all over, not just, not just, uh, Michigan, but it was people from Ohio, people from Chicago, people from California. It was a guy that came from China. I think a, lo a lot of students need that opportunity or deserve the opportunity just so they could see 
because you you won't be seeing anything outside of the classroom or outside of Michigan. And a lot of students don't get to travel in general with their family. A lot of people don't get get that at home. Like I'm one of those students. We didn't we don't have the resources to always travel or go on a trip or things like that. So just having um students be able to just go out of go out of the state and present themselves, I think that'd be like that's a great experience. Cause that's one of my favorite best experiences here. Yeah, uh now that DeAnthony has, has shared his um I think I've, it's given me a little bit more time to think about what I want to do. Uh, I definitely think we should have like a like a network uh, of like the same program at different schools. Um, and what I mean by that is multiple schools kind of work like we'd be the hub and, and we reach out to multiple schools. So 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 other other schools in DPSCD, other students in DPSCD who are interested but may not have the um like uh opportunity or the uh resources to be able to, to be able to come to Frederick Douglass can still work within the pathway um with with our same mentors with our uh you know um you know just our our same like I want them to have the same opportunity that we have and and that's that's what I change. That's what almost I like a satellite type system. So you have right, right. connections and spokes, and people can still feed into it, even if they can't get through the bus systems to get there or, or whatever. Um, I think that's amazing. I think it would be amazing if you guys, if this program spurred other programs off from it too. You know, I mean, and no, not that not that anybody can replace Mike and Frank and and Chad as far as being that foundation for it. But you know, wouldn't it be amazing if we saw this in all? You know. Uh, school systems all around the country. That'd be amazing. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it, through GTTC, there are, I think, nine high school programs like this in the state of Michigan. Um, each kind of do it similarly, but each one of them does it differently. Um, personally, I think ours is the best because we have the best team. Um, I'm probably going to get in trouble saying that <laughs> on record, but uh, yeah, it, we are hoping to inspire other schools and other programs. We've had people from out of state reach out to us and say, how are you doing this? And I want to be a part of this summer camp or part of the program and, and share more. Um, it comes down to resources, really, though. Um, funding, uh, there's a lot of limitations, but future, who knows where that's going to go? Um, that's a great idea, Keith. Zylon, did you have any uh, any contributions to that one? Uh, what was the question again? What did we, um, what would you like, what would you see? Okay, let me get my brain together. What changes would you see or would you uh, suggest for the program now that you're a, a senior and you're, you've gone through the whole program, you're part of that first cohort, what kind of changes would you uh, recommend that Mike, Frank, and Chad should consider as far as uh, things that might make it better? So like overall, from my perspective, I really wouldn't like change anything because like it's been great. You see, like, the man has made me into today, Keith, Anthony, and the man that is making it to David and um, <laughs> Devin. And there's all our other underclassmen, our other seniors. So I would say, like, the program is definitely going in the right direction. But we definitely do have roadblocks when it comes to us getting exposure or the proper funding. And I don't want to, like, go too deep into it, but there are some people that's trying to slow us down or stop the growth of our program and stop the outreach of our program. And that's something that I don't like. So that's something that, that's why when I get successful, I want to come back and put my own money into the program and bring the connections that I made in college and throughout life back to the program so that I can stretch the program even further. And um, another thing I would say, um, we have a sister school called DIA. And I think that would be great if we partnered our program with them and combined the male and female body count so that we can have a bigger program. Yeah, because they got the they got the veterinarian yes. program, so it's able to like because they have a because they have a like they have like a pre med program and we have a pre GIS program. We come together and get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Absolutely, that, that sounds amazing. What other classes from the seniors? Are there any other classes or any other? areas of focus that you would like for, for the team to think about adding for future students? I would say, I know like 
the the district tries to do this well, but I think it needs to be like better like SAT prep because the stuff that we did last year didn't help us at all on the test. Like the stuff that I was looking at, I never like I've never seen it unless I was watching a crash course video. <laughs> like, like, but me looking at the books that we have today, it's just very out of date. Not we don't have the right resources and we're not re really fully prepared for the SAT. And that puts us at a disadvantage when it comes to scholarships and getting into schools. And I don't want any of our students to feel like they can't go to college or they can't pay for college because they don't have equal opportunity or equal access. The same as um, suburban schools or schools with that higher income and more funding. I agree. I, I hate it that you guys don't have the the best resources, but maybe the more that we can get you guys out there that can change going down, going, going forward. Um, what about from GIS or drones or anything like that? Is there, are there topics that you are interested in that there isn't as much focus on in the program that you think would be worthy of either a self-standing class, or is there an area that you'd like to study and spend more time on that you just don't have as have enough time to really dig in as deep as you would have liked? Not that I really know of, because like each year we dive really like deeper into GIS. Like they start you off with the introduction. They start us off with the basics. And then each year we just go deeper and deeper until we get to the point where we are now to where you're making your own maps, you're sourcing your own data, and you're making your own data spreadsheets. I would say, I would say also that we should like work more on like entrepreneurship, learning how to be your own business owner, learning how to self-employ yourself, and also more internship opportunities. Like we have OHM, we have Romo GIS, and these are great partners. These are great internships. But as we grow, we want to have more partners. We want to have more access to more internship opportunities, more paying opportunities, and just really leaving our students with options overall. And I'll say from the drone standpoint, once a month, I feel like we need to go out and like actually fly them, like maybe an open field or somewhere with open land to where we go fly the drones and actually get like a real the real hang of it because we have like these little little tello drones but i mean that's like just the intro to it that's not really like <laughs> you know we got little tello drones but you know that that's not really like the real thing of like flying a real drone like a real drone you have to worry about when like when when can completely alter how your drone moves to the controls to even how the controller reacts to the drone like if the wind is too strong the signal may not be that strong that's something that they need to understand. And um, I feel like, yeah, just once a month field trips to just open fields or open fly space that we could go to would be great. And there's maybe one or two drones, somebody, obviously a pick pilot in command, someone with their license. Cause um, our senior class, you know, we all are going to take the test and I have no doubt that we all will leave with the license, but I want um, going into the future. Some like, I want some of our students to start getting their class, like, licenses at a younger age so that they can be the pilot in command and work with the other classmen and then have like Mr. Seegers on site, Frank, Ray Lillibridge, he's one of our partners at OHM. He goes over the drone instruction class. He helps us go over the courses, the basics, the rules, everything for the part 107 is helping us prepare for the test overall. And we start studying for that in our 10th grade year. That's awesome. So I, I just have one last question really for the students. And so it, any any of you guys that have thoughts on this, feel free to weigh in. But what recommendations would you have for new student students entering the program? Uh, what would you suggest, and what would you what would you tell them as they're coming in? Um, I would say take advantage of the opportunity with GIS because GIS is involved in everything in some type of form or way, no matter what it is. And with you having that skill and that certificate under your belt, it not only separates you from others but it also push you into a, a different category of people and help and makes you more eligible for more jobs, eligible for higher pay. And you can negotiate like how much you feel like you should be getting paid per hour. And you also may be like you're able to do somebody else's job. They may thought of hiring because they do need a GIS person for a lot of things when it comes to like other careers that everybody else may be interested in. That's, that's about it. I think that's, that's, that's it. It's great opportunities. 
I remember the GIS day when I went, I met a lot of people, some top tier people, like they, they was really, I, mean, I took a lot of notes about the uh, projects and stuff. I got a couple of people cars for their businesses waiting for my opportunity to talk to them. I got a couple of them right here. So yeah, I'm just waiting for the right time to contact them so I can get to them to where they're at. And yeah, it's all because of Mr. Sears and Frank and Michael. So, yeah. uh, I would say utilizing all the connections everything that you could with take in from this program because that's what you're going to have to do in life moving forward as in if you plan to go to college you're paying for a lot of people pay for a bunch of services and um like counseling and um tutoring and everything but they don't even use it so i say just utilizing and getting used to utilizing everything and taking in everything and don't be afraid to just take in the advice because the people that you meet here is going to care for you for the rest of your life. Usually people will say after high school, you're just a number. After you leave here, you can always come back open armed. You don't even have to plan your visit because people here are always going to love you. Just people going to always have a plan for you no matter what. So just utilize and take in every connection that you can just because it'll always be worth it. You could, um, the, the internship opportunities you get you do well at this internship opportunity they're gonna want you to come back they're gonna want you to do more and you meet people there they might have something for you for what you're looking for to go to after high school or maybe have something that you can do right now to push you towards your goal or get you closer to your goal or get you more hours or certification in that role because i'm i'm living proof i had um I had I was interested in website design over the summer and Frank introduced me to uh website design and I ended up posting like websites I was working on using Java and JavaScript and some people had um reached out to me and helped me um perform better and get my skills better for free just just because they thought it was cool that I wanted to go into website design at such a young age. So I just think um utilizing and taking in everything you learn and just not being afraid to shake a shake new hands and talk to more people and be more social because being social is what's going to make you more qualified for any job just because you can speak because a lot of people in the technology department can perform well and do what do their project well but they're not really that good at presenting it so i think it, you just being able to present and describe what you did really well in your project because th that's what we focus on we focus on putting the work in but we also focus on we also focus on presenting the work just as good as you've done the work so just being able to present your work after you've done it i think that really like sets you apart so just getting your presentation skills together as well before um i knew a lot about javascript I always uh, did research and everything, and I seen that it was on the overcome. I was looking at the the stock of it because I was, I'm interested in stocks as well. So I was looking at the stock of, of it, and I was always interested in website design and just building my own interface as a kid because of the movies I watched as a young age, just seeing how, how cool it was, um, just seeing the people bring the websites together and just launching like large businesses in these particular movies. So when I, once I seen like the stock of it going up and I seen all the free programs, because, you know, I got a master's degree in YouTube University. That's where I learned a lot of stuff. That's how I learned and found out about a bunch of free courses and website design courses. And um, yeah, so just moving forward, I was able to um, obtain JavaScript and um, just Java uh, skill experience so I could move forward and now it's like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, code uh, script or language for um, making websites and making apps and interfaces and things of that nature. So I, um, I plan to gain more skill on it because I plan on using GIS moving forward because I'm interested in being, I don't know yet, my major is biology, but I'm interested in being either a dentist or a respiratory therapist and... I wanted to make a map about um, 
kids with asthma um mm -hmm. that doesn't have the resources or the uh like the asthma pump or the money for the asthma pump but can't overcome it because i was one of those students or one of those kids when I was younger, but I had an inspiring respiratory therapist when I was younger, and he told me everything I had to do to overcome asthma because I was told I'd never be able to play sports ever. Moving forward, I'm able to. I was able to play football. I was able to do track and field. I was able to do play every sport I wanted to. I played basketball. I was able to play every sport I wanted to, and even get offered for it in college, Division One and Division Two offers moving forward when I was told I never was going to be able to play these sports. So just being able to do that for someone else would just be inspiring and awesome. So that's, uh, that's really what pushes me in the computer aspect, because this is next, uh, computer, a artificial intelligence, computer coding is, is taking over and I want to be a part of it. So GIS being one of the OGs of it, because I was, I was um when I was when I was speaking with um EOS, they uh they told me how uh when you were getting on the internet you had to make a call and then they will shoot they will send a uh they'll send a satellite interface uh to your to your device and then you have to get on I think it was called web page or web something dial up that's that was our yeah. Google you know about my Google. <laughs> <laughs> we had to and, and you had to do all that and GIS was still around then. So just just thinking it about it and all the um the GPS locators and just how GIS has evolved and I just so happen to be a part of the easy part of it developing just that's that's just so awesome. And I plan to use GIS forever. I wanna become one of the partnerships with this school as a GIS partner or did anything to help more students do this because I, I believe every student should have a GIS skill just because of how involved and how much this is needed in every department. Always having, you heard our students speak today, right, about the diversity of perspectives and backgrounds um, and how we utilize that, you know, to, to build upon. And so I think that's really great and we would love to see um, some of those connections happen because I know some of our students will be blown away by some of the GIS that goes on all over the world, right? We're very focused on the U.S. right now, but we would love to to expand um, our work, but also have people come to speak with us to share what they're doing so that our students can continue to get the wheels turning about what is possible for them, not just in Detroit or in the United States, but all over the world. So before I transition back to the leaders, did the students, did anybody else have anything else they wanted to say before I kind of shift away from this segment of the podcast? You guys have been amazing. Oh, I just wanted to say that this program gives you this program gives you more than enough opportunities on your plate for your future. I forgot to iterate that when I was speaking back then, but I just wanted to tell you that now because you have you have your robotic skills, the building coding, your speaking skills, your your ability to build the GIS maps and talk about GIS your ability to just like talk in front of people you have i just wanted to say you have this this drums to my bad and this this program really gives you a better understanding of the future and your life and what you want to do with it thank you thank you david i appreciate it okay great job Good gentlemen deal. Thank Great you job. guys so, so much. You guys did an amazing job. I am blown away. And I just want to say for you guys to just stay super proactive, stay super driven, you know, learn the things that you're interested in, stay, you know, positive about it and just dig in and just soak up as much as you can as you move through your classes and, you know, advance that, you know, higher education and all the rest of the ways. You guys are going to do great and amazing things. And you guys are just a testament to, um, everything that the program um, that they've built in the program, but also your own drive and commitment. So you guys, I, I can't say thank you. Thank you. Thank you enough. And I, how much I appreciate you guys and how impressed I am by you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, thank you. appreciate you for having us. Great job, fellas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to follow up. I plan to hear from you guys again and not just today. Uh, hopefully, we see some of y'all at our um, 
three day summer camp this summer, just to see what we uh what we do at um Frederick Douglass because I, I don't know what the topic is gonna be this year, but we usually just learn a new skill and yeah. then over the three days and then the third day we just showcase what we do or what we done the past two days using the new skill that we learned. So hopefully we see you guys there at our um three day summer camp again. Thank you for inviting us to the podcast. You're so welcome. Thank you. It it would be amazing to get to come. It would. For sure. For sure. <laughs> We've mentioned the we mentioned several a couple of things that I want to circle circle back yeah. to, but one of them is the EOS connection. So yep. EOS is how we were able to find out about you guys. And I know that they kind of um and I they partnered with you guys and they've been, you know, involved with the program. So I don't know who's the best one to talk about that. Michael, if you're the best one or Frank, whoever you guys, let's talk about the EOS um, involvement and what that looks like and what a partnership with this program looks like for someone who might be interested if they hear this podcast later and want to plug in. What does that look like? Sure. Uh, so OHM has been working with EOS since 2017. Um, and as a trusted business partner with OHM, uh, I saw an opportunity to reach out to them last year to see if they'd be interested in helping to support our program. And, you know, they're a great organization from top to bottom, and they jumped at the opportunity to help give back. They noted, donated a few EOS Aero GNSS receivers to us and some extra equipment uh, for our students to learn about GNSS or GPS and how to integrate that with their drones for um, their different control points and how to do just basic data collection, again, to try to help equip them with the skills to become employees right out of school, if, if need be. Um, they even wanted to travel down to Detroit and really immerse themselves in our program. So last year, uh, they came on site for a few days. They saw what we're doing and heard from all the great young men, like you just heard. Um, they really got to see what, why why we're doing this and, and how we're doing it. Um, they even started a a GoFundMe page for our program, which was awesome to help raise money for um, this, this cohort that's going through. Um, you know, they didn't have to waste their time on us, but they wanted to and did. And you know, that shows true character of a great organization. And I'm very thankful for Sarah, Emma, JY, and everyone at EOS for doing that. Um, it's through our corporate sponsors and our support from, from businesses in the industry is what's going to help us continue moving forward. Um, we are a self-funded program, uh, so uh, in order to keep moving forward, we have to utilize our connections and our network to to help us. And they've been a great partner with us and have created some great stories and pieces on us. Working with you guys at Esri, uh, making this connection has been awesome. Um, you know, we we're we're looking for other business partners. It doesn't have to be in the the GPS field, for example. It could be in whatever field possible. Um, we've got uh, Turner Construction, and we've got some other organizations as well that are donating their time and resources to us. And uh, I'm thankful OHM allows me and Ray to do what we're doing as well. Um, as with Roma JS and Frank and, and really everybody, uh, you know, but bottom line, EOS is awesome. Their equipment is awesome. Their people are awesome. They're just a great organization that cares. And, you know, they get trained up and, and learn about these devices and go on to a, a construction company or an engineering firm somewhere and earn the ability to acquire equipment. They're going to remember EOS and them coming in and talking to them and caring about them and their fellow students. And, you know, that goes a long ways in the business. You, you know, you're, you're planting the seed. You never know what's going to come to fruition. And it's just a great thing that they did. And I um, will forever be thankful for that. It it just seems like such a such an impactful connection to have, and you know, just for not only from the equipment, but for them to come in and spend the time, and you know, do the resources and spend you know, just spend time with the students and and make those connections for them as well. Um, that'll stick with them, kind of like you mentioned. But um, I just I don't know. That's that's super cool that EOS would do that. Yep, I mean, they had a lot of people there, and they spent a lot of time with our students talking. The, like DeAnthony said, from the very basics, what it looked like 15 years ago in the GPS field to five years ago to now to where they're going as a company and the technology that they're developing and how they really, how JY kind of set the standard in the industry and created something that others now mimic and try to compete with. And 
you know, that's inspirational to the students as well of, of coming up with an idea and, and bringing it to market and selling it and developing a product and a business, um, which is, is also a big thing too. And just for the listeners, JY is John Eves. John Eves, he is, he, Yeah, he's with EOS. He's the, as far as I understand, he's the founder of the company, CEO. Right. Yeah. And so he's he's amazing. We love John Eve and we're trying to get him on as well. So. <laughs> Got some great stories. <laughs> I know he's amazing. He's he he has incredible stories. So. We thought he was going to crash our drone at first, but he did a good <laughs> job. Bless him. <laughs> Bless it. <laughs> and I think the work with EOS is just one example, right? Um, Mike also mentioned Turner Construction and a few other folks um, who are interested in supporting the program. And as Chad always says, you know, we want folks who are going to come here to help support our students and help empower and amplify their voice. EOS definitely did that. You, you saw the impact that they had on our students, even um, through the video that they created for us that you could find on YouTube. They also um, just being in the classroom and making those connections, you know, it was genuine. And we want, if anybody's interested in participating with the program, as Chad always says, you know, bring your time, treasure, and talent, whatever it, whatever it is that you can offer that is focused on amplifying the students' voices and getting them more ready. We are open to anybody who wants to work with us as, as long as we are able to put the students first and ensure that their voices are, are leading the way. And I think EOS is, is a great example of how they did that. They uplifted our students. They made them feel, when they left, our students were more confident, more eloquent. And that is the type of partners we're looking for, folks who are able to put that best foot forward and say, hey, we're here because we believe in what you're doing. We're genuine here. And we want to make sure that the students are successful. And so a really big shout out to them and all of our partners who have been uh, supportive of us, not just this year, but over the past four years, because we wouldn't have been here without all of the partners, um, big and small, who have helped us get here, as well as the administrators, Mr. Davis at the school, who has been a uh, remarkable, you know, support uh, along with Chad because, and uh, Dr. White, right? Those, those gentlemen who are there day in and day out, um, they really set the tone. And so when those partners come in, they know what to expect. And I think it's really great to have those partners. And we are open to anybody else who is interested in working with us uh, to follow up. So Frank, you pretty much covered my next question, which was to ask if, you know, how you're looking to build the network and, you know, trying to network with companies like Esri and EOS and some of these others. And, you know, I love the fact that you were, you mentioned, and, you know, Mike mentioned it as well, that it doesn't have to be a geospatial company. It can be anybody that wants to pour into these kids and pour into this program and pour into this school that sees the connections, that sees, you know, how it's resonating with them and help, you know, just build up a program and build up these kids that, you know, may not get these opportunities without people who see the importance in them as individuals, you know, um, that how, how special it is for them to get that attention and to have, um, you know, people coming from wherever they are, um, and want to focus on them because they don't, they don't always get that. And so it's just, it's, it's, it seems so foundational and fundamental for your program to have people who want to tie in and want to contribute and want to, you know, make it better however they can, whether it's, you know, time, resources, money, you know, encouragement for the students, whatever they can do. So, um, yeah, thank I mean, you. Uh, one, one other, one other group that I would like to mention is, um, mm -hmm. your risk, uh, urban mm -hmm. regional education systems. Um, they have been super supportive of our of our students. Our students, as Zylon and DeAnthony mentioned, uh, we traveled to Ohio to present, and they opened up the conference. And Eurissa helped sponsor our students um, stay at the conference and the, the comping the registration for the conference. And um, that was a big deal because again, there we see not only they were able to support us um, from a financial perspective, but they gave the students one of the largest stages they've ever spoken on. They opened up for about 300 people. And I know that, and as you heard them say, you know, maybe they were nervous before, but after that, you should have seen them. They were networking, they were connecting on LinkedIn, they were doing so much. And I think um, that's another organization that um, is in the industry, you know, kind of adjacent, uh, maybe somewhat education, somewhat GIS, somewhat professional development, but they have been super supportive of our students as well. I presented at one of their conferences in California um, just recently, and all I got asked about was, how's Zylon? How's the Anthony? How are the guys? How's the Frederick Douglass program going? Like, our students are becoming a staple in the geospatial industry, and our program is becoming a leader in the geospatial industry. And that is um, a big thanks to Chad, Mike, 
Ray Lillibridge, all of the folks who are here and who have supported us. And uh, I just wanted to give them a shout out as well, because they definitely gave our students uh, more than one opportunity to present and amplify their voice. I think that's awesome. And, you know, they're just getting such a such a learning opportunity for life skills and just all the things I can't imagine getting to go and present. You know, I had a presentation when I was in school and we did go to like a Southeast regional user group, but it, there might've been 50 people that we presented to. And so they're just so, um, they're so, so far ahead of the game because of you guys. So, you know, y'all are, y'all are awesome to, to give them that and to make those connections and, um, you know, build, build them up the way that you have. It's just, you know, you're really building these leaders for the future of GIS. And when they go out in the world, you know, you said your, your program is being recognized and it's, you know, people know and are learning about it and they know what it is. And so they're going to go into job interviews and they're going to go in and have conversations once they're in the working field. And they're going to say, yes, I'm a graduate from Frederick Douglass Academy. And, and people are going to know what that is. And it's going to mean something. You know, it's going to mean a, a it, it, it's going to mean a certain level of aptitude in the for the program for GIS drones. You know, people are going to know what you guys are instilling in them, and it's going to skyrocket them as far as you know them being um, you know candidates for for things or being chosen to do something. You know, for to represent a company or whatever. I mean, it's just going to be amazing for them to have it on the resume if nothing else, you know, so, um, but it, it's, it's going to mean something out in the world because people are going to know. I appreciate you saying that. Oh, sorry. I, I, last thing, last thing. I appreciate you saying that because um, I travel a lot with Romo GIS all over the country and um, our students are getting recognized. And, and that's what feels really great because when you heard Anthony talk about the connections he's made and things like that, that is inspiring to them. That makes them feel like they are part of the professional community. And we are interested in transitioning them from students to professionals. And so having them be part of that and be recognized in those ecosystems is really empowering for them. They're like, oh, dang, they really know who we are. They, they really, they knew who we are before we talked to them. And so that's a really big thing that's happening already. And it's, it's a beautiful thing because it, it just gives our students way more confidence to believe that they belong and that the work that they're doing is valued. It has a lot to do, I think, also with the way things, uh... The way the, the, the program is structured, um, it's one thing to try to put uh, uh, advisory board members or uh, community partners or business partners in front of students and believe that that's just going to work. Um, because uh, you have to make sure that the, um, for one, there's structure in place. Um, two, that you have a plan going in that it's always going to be about students first. and and you've heard us talk about that today. Um, every decision we try to make is what effect and uh, does that mean for our students? Um, and, and I think there's something to say about the way in which we do it. I, a lot of things have come together in this group. You know, um, it, it's, 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 a, a, it's a, a, a Dr. White, the principal who has given us uh, the space to try to mold us in the way in which I, I think is best. And, and it's finding those that have care and concern um, in the industry for our students and giving them the opportunity to interact with them, not limiting what they do, letting them uh, become, uh, to find out the students' needs because without that, um, professionals, they're not, they're not gonna be uh, equipped to, to, to do what's in the best interests of the student. And I think it also makes our, uh, our partners just want to do more. <laughs> it's just the right way to do it. it, it it's not asking them to go above and beyond. Um, it's, it's, hey, these kids deserve it. And feel how, see how good you feel when, after you do it. I mean, it, it's just, there, it, it is a win-win situation that we've developed here as a team. And, uh, you know, and, and the, the quality people we have on our advisory board, um, you know, each and every one of them have our students' best interests in mind. We've structured it with our NAF uh, uh, program uh, and their, their approach to uh, how to structure what that looks like. That's given us some direction and, and, and how to make sure that we're 
focused on the things that are most important, and that's work-based learning opportunities, advisory board, curriculum and instruction, and having a program of study that meets their needs. And as long as you are intentional about that, and every decision you make is about students, and then let people be with the students. <laughs> it's not a field trip. It's not a one-off to go to a externship or to go to a job shadow or a career fair. Um, it's every day. It's all the time here. And it's students beginning to take control of that. DeAnthony just led a college fair here at the school. And it went over well. And he was instructing all of his peers on how you conduct yourself and watching them as they went through it. And you have your quality adults that I can't say enough about interacting with our students that, you know, just, it brings it home. If there's a way that a program is done the right way, um, everyone should be trying to knock on our door and, and see how it, how it gets done. Because, um, and, and like they, you've heard, people are. And we just have to figure out how we open that door. <laughs> and, you know, and just, uh, you know, so that's, that's a good thing to have. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it, it, it keeps me going each and every day I come in here. And it, uh, you know, I think uh, we, we're doing it right. And, and to showcase that, you, you mentioned NAF. You know, we were named a distinguished academy for our pathway program. And there is zero in the state of Michigan. There's only one in the whole Great Lakes region. That's in Wisconsin. So uh, that's the highest model award that we can get at NAF, showing that we're checking all of those boxes. We are doing all the right things. And we have a program to show off. We're the only GIS program in all of the NAF uh, career pathways that are a part of that organization. Um, so, you know, it is being recognized, which is awesome. So I, I feel like Chad's comments are a great way to, you know, kind of end on this note. You know, Mike, you added a few more things. If, does anybody have anything else that they want to add before we, you know, completely wrap up? Do y'all have any final thoughts? Because I don't know that my questions are going to add anything beyond what Chad and you guys have already covered. I think y'all have done an amazing job today. One, one thing that I would like to mention is that um, just recently we had the state superintendent come down to the school. I believe that, um, you know, I don't want to quote her, but I think she said it was one of her best visits that she's had over the past X amount of years. Of She came down uh, with her staff and we had all of our community partners here and our, our gentlemen were suited up and they all gave their presentations. They gave their um, testimonial about how they got here and what has how the program has impacted them. And again, it was just one of those events that was a little bit of a tearjerker and was just something that really showcased how how progressive this program is. And hopefully, you know, with the NAF uh, distinguished uh, certification, with the recognition from the state superintendent, and now our students are going to be going to the state capitol to present. Um, these things are great indicators of where we're going. And we want to continue to be leaders, not just in the state of Michigan, but throughout the country. So I just wanted to share that as well, because that happened maybe maybe like a month ago. And um, it was a really great visit and something that our students, again, excelled at and really showcased our program very well. I think you guys have all the opportunities ahead of you as far as, you know, with the program and getting to showcase it. I just think so many people are going to be interested in what you're doing and they're going to want to talk to you. And I can only imagine because I've been so touched and so, um, you know, just so interested with the students on here and you guys as well. I can only imagine coming on site, how it's even more so it's it's going to be, you know, it would be, it would resonate even more by being there in person and being able to talk to them and see them in person and really let them get excited about their work and show off what they're doing and what they're learning. Well, I, be, I be know the fun. summer camp is like the week before the UC and not many Esri folks can come to it. So <laughs> this is our offer to you in the fall. If you want an on-site live podcast, we will host you and we will make it <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, that would be amazing. <laughs> Plug right there, Mike. Good job, buddy. <laughs> no. we, we will be represented at the educational Esri conference as well. Um, this will be the second year that uh, uh, I will be presenting on behalf of the program. So if you are at the educational conference uh, this year in 2024, we will be speaking about the program and highlighting some of the work that the students have done and talking about the program to hopefully inspire some other folks who 
who are interested in doing this work. So you can also catch us at the SV Educational Conference this year. That would be that would be awesome. Like it'd be great if people stopped by and chatted with you even there. That would be, you know, I'm sure you wouldn't mind that at all. So all right, guys. Thank y'all so much. Does anybody have anything else? Are we good? Did we did we cover everything? I know I know I had some questions that I'm leaving on the board, but it's totally fine. We, I think we once got, you get we, we got the ready, goal for once you get ready for the good and all that, um, let me know and I can make sure you have the right um links and you have our QR codes. Um, so if people want to find out more, they could visit the site and check them out. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time. I can't say thank you enough. I love the program. I was captivated when uh, Sarah with EOS told me about it. And I just, I love talking to the students so much today. They're amazing. And I just think you guys have such a, just an incredible program here that you're building. And I just wish you all the best. I hope, I hope good things continue to come forward for you. I hope people find out about it through this and reach out and get involved. I just, you know, I hope you guys continue to have success because this first co cohort of students who have come out, they are absolutely impressive. They, they're they going to do amazing things. And I, I know the, the next rounds are going to be just as good as they are because you guys are pouring in so much passion and energy. And thank you all for, for doing what you do. It's incredible. Thank you for having us. And hopefully in three, four years, we'll start getting some of our folks joining the Esri team as well. And see where it goes absolutely absolutely thank, thank you, you very so much for your time i truly uh appreciate the opportunity so the episode with frederick douglas academy was so interesting it was such a different um a different vibe for me having so many people on i think i lost track of how many people i was interviewing honestly we had you know michael frank and chad who were kind of the main ringleaders of the program and then we had the group of students who came on as well and so you know we had quite a few of them I think we had like five of them or so on here five or six and so um, that ended up being a really big group to manage the conversation and walk through all the things and kind of cover everything but I cannot tell you guys how much I loved the that episode and that recording and that conversation um, the students were so engaging they were so impressive the work that they've done is really really impressive um, I found out about the GIS Pathway programs from my conversation last season um, with Sarah Alban, Alban from EOS. And so, you know, we were able to then connect with Fred, Frederick Douglass Academy and um, all the, the players there and, and bring this episode to you as well. And I don't know. I don't have... I, I don't have enough good things. I can't say enough good things about them. I think it's an amazing program. I think Michael, Frank, and Chad do such a great job promoting it, building it. They pour their their heart and their soul into this program and into these students. Um, they really, you know, it's not just about the program and not just about teaching them GIS. They're wanting to teach them life skills, and they give them, you know, somebody to call when they need something. You know, if they, you know, it's not just for the time that they're in school. Um, these these students could call any of the three of these gentlemen and they would help them, you know, they would pick them up and give them a ride if they need it, whatever it is. They're so invested and it's just really, really amazing to see a program like this and to see people who continue to be excited about it and continue to build it up. And these students who are coming through, the first group, the first graduating group has gone through and they graduated this spring. And they're so sharp. They're going out and they're getting they're they're going out in the workforce and they're going out into to school and they're getting college credits and then they're starting their advanced educations. And so this the, the program is giving them such a foundation that I think it's going to be so important for them. And um, I don't know. I just like I said, I can't say enough good things about this one as well. So feel free to check out Frederick Douglass Academy. We have a lot of notes, a lot of links in the show notes about it. Um, about the program and, you know, think about how you could do something similar in, in your area, I guess is one of the best things I could say about it. And if there's any support that you can give and you'd be interested in plugging in with FDA, by all means, um, reach out to Michael, Frank, or Chad. You know, they're very active on LinkedIn as well. So I just really appreciate them, to all of them and the students for coming on and, and talking with us. I think this was such a... Um, it's such a good episode. I think it was such an amazing opportunity to see GIS working in a high school scenario and doing really, really good things for the students who are there who are building up their skills. That wraps up today's episode. Please feel free to reach out with your comments, or if you have an interesting topic that you would like to hear, please let us know. Thanks again for your time, and tune in for our next podcast.